presenting the transcription feature, Superman! And now, Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men, and who fights a never-ending battle against crime and injustice, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. Today begins for Superman an adventure which, if not the oddest in his career, is certainly the most mysterious. An adventure filled with action, suspense, and some of the strangest characters we have yet met. Our story begins in the office of Editor White at the Daily Planet. Listen. Yes? Oh, uh, come in, Ken. Come in, Jimmy. All packed and ready to start, I see. Yes, Chief. Jimmy and I have come to say goodbye. Shiver my timbers if we haven't. What? My duffel's all ready and we're all set to shove off. <laughs> Listen to the old salt. Old oh, salt. Oh, gosh, Mr. Kent, if we're going around the world on the last of the clipper ships, i got to talk so the crew will understand me, don't I? They'll understand you without all that nautical gibberish. Now, sit down, you two. The Clarion doesn't sail for another hour, and I've got some things to talk over with you, Kent. Gosh, Mr. White, we've got to get on board and stow our duck. If you don't stow your talk, young man, you won't go aboard at all. Ah, <laughs> now, don't mind Jimmy, Chief. He's just bubbling over with excitement and anxious to get started. Now, what did you want to talk to me about? I just want to be sure, Kent, that you understand what you're to do on this voyage you're taking. Oh, now, Chief, we've been over this a hundred times since you first thought of the idea. And we'll go over it a hundred more if I think it necessary. I want to be sure you understand the articles you're going to write from every angle. Sometimes, Chief, I find myself feeling sorry the owner of this paper ever bought the Clara M. Oh, gosh, I don't. I think of the places we're going to. South America, Borneo, India, Africa. Gosh, I get so excited I can hardly talk. Blow me down if I don't. (laughs) I'll blow you down with pleasure if you don't shut up. Yes, sir. Now, Kent, as you know, this is all in the way of a publicity campaign to build circulation for the paper. The Clara M is the last of the old clipper ships. That's going to be your lead. Last of the clipper ships. I've got it. Into these articles you're going to write, you've got to put all the romance, all the color of the Clara M's past, contrasting that with the future that awaits her. Yes. This is her last voyage, Kent. When you return with her, Mr. Barwick, the owner of the paper, plans to tie her up to a dock and turn her into a marine museum. Sure, Chief. But look, I know all this, and we're anxious to get down to the ship. I want to be sure that you know it. Barwick's all excited about this idea of his. And these articles you are going to write, Kent, uh, telling how it feels to be making this romantic voyage in the last of the clipper ships, have got to be great stuff. Now, just let's be sure you've got your facts straight. The Clara M was built in 1889. Uh, 1879, uh, Mr. White. Uh, excuse me. What's that? Uh, yes, sir. Her keel was laid in June of the year 1878 at Aberdeen, Scotland, and she cleared from that city for the first time in August of 1879. She was built for speed in the China tea trade. Her hull is of teak, her decks of mahogany, and... <laughs> All right, Jimmy. All right, I guess you'll concede, Chief. There's hardly anything you can tell us about the Clara M. Mm, well, uh, excuse me. Yes? Who wants to see me? Uh, Mr. Barnaby. What do you want? Oh, I won't say, eh? I see. I'll tell him to wait. Well, Kent, it looks as if you and uh, young Moby Dick here have everything straight. But all you've got into the articles is send back. Make people buy the Daily Planet just to read what you've got to say about the last of the clipper ships. That understood? Don't worry, Chief. Uh, well, I, I won't be seeing you two for a long time. Good luck and bon voyage. Thanks, Chief. All right, Jim, pick up your duffel and let's shove off. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, uh, tell Miss Kenyon to send Mr. Barnaby in, will you? Right. Goodbye, Chief. Goodbye, goodbye. sir. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Miss Kenyon, you can send Mr. Barnaby in. Uh, I hate to see those two go. I'm going to miss them. Thought I'd never let them know it. Well, I guess I'd better... Uh... All right, mate. Oh, what the... Oh, uh, Mr. Barnaby? Aye, the same... Sit down. Hey, hold it to you, I'm sure. I'll, uh, I'll move this chair back from your desk, you might see, and I've got to keep my leg out in front of me, and I'll need the room. The leg? Aye, mate. It's made of teak. The finest this side of the China Sea. That's why I'm called Teak. Teak Barnaby. Uh, count of my leg. Oh, I say. Uh, well, uh, what can I do for you? Yep. Being a good seafarer man, I'll steer my course straight to the point. The uh, owner of this newspaper, Mr. Barwick, bought a clipper ship named the Clara M, and uh, I want to buy her. I'm afraid she's not for sale, Mr. Barnaby. Tig Barnaby was never one for bargaining, sir. So just forget the preliminaries and name your price. I'll meet it. I meant what I said, Barnaby. The Clara M is not for sale. Mr. Barwick bought the ship for the one purpose of developing a publicity campaign to boost the paper circulation. 
As a matter of fact, she's sailing within the hour for a trip around the world with one of my best reporters on board. Glad to, matey. Tick Barnaby's always got what he went after. Now, I'll pay you any price. You're yet. wasting my time and your own, Barnaby. I repeat, the Clara M is not for sale. Matey, everything has its price. Yes, if it's for sale. Now, look here, Barnaby. Just why are you uh, so anxious to buy the Clara M? I have my reasons. What reasons? I don't like your tone, matey. You make it sound as if wanted to buy a sailing vessel was a crime. I never said that. Aye, but you implied it. Now trim your sheets and listen to me. I want the Clara M and I intend having it. What my reasons may or may not be is no wind out of your sails. So you'd best not inquire into them. Now then, what's your price? You love all the colossal nerve. I, I think it's time you left. You won't sell? I will not. Now get out. You're making a mistake, matey. A great mistake. That's my lookout. Good day, sir. Good day, matey. If you'd care to reconsider... Good day. You've made a mistake, matey. By heaven, if you don't get out of here... Me too. I'm shoving off. on a crew. There's a new batch of men on their way over from the Seaman's Rest, Mr. Kent. We won't have any trouble getting through. Gosh, Captain Hawkins, we expected to find you aboard the Clara M with a crew and everything, all set to sail. I know, I know. So what seems to be the trouble, Captain? Why, there's no trouble, Mr. Kent. It's just that men don't go in sail anymore these days. Sailing means hard work. Harder work than you'd find aboard modern ships, and the accommodations aren't any too good. But, uh, Mr. Kent, here come the men I was speaking about. We'll have a crew in no time at all. Sir, sir we've come over from the Seaman's Rest to sign on, sir. Line up before the desk, you men. Right, sir. One at a time. All right. Now then, you. What's your name? Patrick Finity, sir. What birth? Abel Seaman, sir. Sign here. Right, sir. There's a pen. Thank you, sir. And, uh, what would be the name of the ship, sir? The name? Oh, the Clara M. Signed here. Begging your pardon, sir. I've uh, changed my mind. I won't be sailing with you. As you like. Uh, just a moment, Captain. Why won't this man... It's sir? all right, Mr. Kent. Don't worry. Next. All right, sir. Your name? Angus McKenzie. What birth? Abel Seaman. Signed here, mister. Uh, right here. All right, sir. Go ahead, man. Finish signing. Uh, I beg pardon, sir. Did I hear the name Clara M? You did. What of it? Nothing, sir, only. I'm no signing on. Uh, just a minute. Now, sir. now, Mr. Candy. Why won't you sign on? What's the trouble? There's no trouble, sir. I've changed my mind, that's all. Looks like they've all changed their minds. They're walking out. So I see. Captain Hawkins. It's as I the... say, Mr. Kent. They know the Clara M is a sailing vessel, and the minute they hear the name, they decide it's too much work. There seems to be more behind it than that. Now, now, please don't worry. I'll get a crew. Just leave it to me. We may not sail within the hour, but we'll sail. Well, all right. Well, Jimmy, since it looks as if we're going to be here for some time, I'd suggest we drop over to that cafeteria at the end of the dock there and have a sandwich. Okay, Mr. Kent. I am feeling a little hungry. Uh, all right. We won't be long, Captain. Take your time, Mr. Kent, and don't worry. I may have a crew signed on by the time you get back. I see another batch of men coming this way now. Well, I hope so, Captain. I hope so. Yeah, feel better, Jim? I sure do, Mr. Kent. That sandwich and milk sure hit the spot. Good. Let's get back to the dock, huh? Yes, sir. Well, I wonder if Captain Hawkins has signed on anyone as yet. So do I. Sure was funny, those men changing their minds the minute they heard the name Clara M. Well, Captain Hawkins' reason may be the right one. It may be that they just... Ahoy! Kent! Huh? Ashore there! Ahoy! What the... Oh, it's Captain Hawkins, Mr. Kent. There he is at the rail of the Clara M. Oh, what's he doing on board? I expected him to be on the in the dock office. Ahoy, Captain! What is it? Come 
board me. You mean you've got a crew? I have indeed. Well, I'll be... Come on, Jim. Aye, aye, sir. Yeah, watch the gangplank there. Watch the gangplank. Well, Mr. Kent, are you surprised? Surprised is hardly the word, Captain. How did you manage it? Look, Mr. Kent, look. That batch of men coming in as you were leaving signed on, every one. What? As fine a crew as you'd ever want to see. The first mate's actually been in sail back in the old days. Huh? Hey, you'll want to know him. I- I'll call him over. Oh, uh, you mustn't mind his looks, and I uh, I wouldn't pay too much attention to his leg. His leg? Yes, he's uh, got a wooden leg. Uh, here he comes now. Me, sir. Aye, mister, I did. I want to make you acquainted with Mr. Kent and young Jimmy Olson. Mr. Kent is the reporter I told you about who's going to write that series of articles about the last voyage of the Claire Am. Pleasure, Mr. Barnaby. Well, it is that, matey. So we're to have a lot aboard, too, are we? Aye, sir, I'm coming, too. <laughs> well, keep your ears open and your eyes peeled, laddie, and you'll learn a lot. Blow me down if a voyage in an old windjammer like the Claire I am ain't the finest education a boy can have. I'll try to learn, sir. Mr. Right. Barnaby, we'd best be underway. There's a freshening breeze, and we can just catch the tide if we're quick about it. Aye, yes, sir. We'll weigh anchor. And the windlass! And the windlass! Holy mackerel, what a voice! <laughs> the first mate in an old windjammer needs a good pair of lungs, laddie. Yeah, it would appear that way. Break sail! Break sail! Put your backs into your skip, throw it, that fish. On the way there, you. All together now. Eee! Oh! Eee! Oh! Hey, lay, you oh. up in the main so. Up to the grass. Quite away there. Quite away. Not only for a Chinese pirate. I've yet to see the likes of such a crow. Gosh, Mr. Kent, listen to him. Her sails are filling, Mr. Barnaby. Yes, yeah, sir. You on the wheel there. That's the answer. Aye, that's the answer. Well, we're on the way, sir. Take over, Mr. Barnaby. Your course is due south. Aye, aye, sir. And so, with the mysterious peg-leg Mr. Barnaby aboard, the Clara M. set sail on her last voyage around the world. Sails billowing in a spanking breeze, she cuts the water southward bound. Night falls over the sea... And in the cabin of Captain Hawkins, Clark Kent and Jimmy Olsen sit down to their first dinner aboard ship. Oh, gosh, I'm so hungry I could eat a whale. Well, dig in, lad, dig in. Well, there's an extra place set, I see, Captain. Aye, Mr. Barnaby will be along shortly. He's a strange sort of man, Captain. Aye, aye, he is, but you'll find many a queer on at sea, Mr. Kent. He seems pleasant enough, but there's something in the way he looks at you. I can't quite put my finger on it. Sounds like him coming now. Uh, it's Barnaby, all right. Ahoy, mate. Oh, Barnaby. Barnaby. Oh, well, lad. How are you finding your first meal at sea? It eh? sure is exciting. <laughs> Gosh, with the creaking of this old ship and those oil lamps swinging back and forth above us, why, it's like a scene out of a movie. <laughs> is that it is. Fog clearing any, Mr. Barnaby? No, it's thickening, and that's a fact. Making up soupy, I'd say. I've given orders to use the horn if it gets any thicker. All right. Well, you seem quiet, Mr. Kent. Hmm? Not saying much. Oh, uh, I've been wondering ever since we sailed, Captain. Can't quite understand how you managed to sign on a crew in such quick time. Especially when you'd been having such trouble getting a crew before. Well, as I explained to you, Mr. Barnaby and the rest of the men came along at that precise moment, all looking for bursts. Hey, a piece of luck, I'd say. Well, uh, this is the first I've heard of you having trouble signing on a crew, Captain. A yeah, little, not much. Well, I'd lay most of them had heard the rumor about the Claire I am. Rumor? Oh, what kind of a rumor, Mr. Barnaby? Gosh, what's that? <laughs> That's a foghorn, lad. Fog must be thickening. Well, now, as, uh, as to that rumor... You'd best leave off that, mister. It's nothing but waterfront gossip. I am therefore harmless to the lad... You see, lad, every ship has its superstition attached to it. And the Clara M is no exception. What sort of a superstition, Mr. Barnaby? You haven't heard about the Whistler? The Whistler? Aye, lad. Oh, it ain't much to tell. The legend has it that uh, many years ago, the first mate, uh, like myself, had a fondness for whistling. Whistle like a bird, he could. You could always tell when he was about uh, 
for he was never done whistling. Well, as the legend has it, he had taken the wheel one night in a howling gale. One of them nights when the sea's kicking up, hurling wave after wave over the decks. Well, lad, our first mate choked our wheel that night and was never heard from again. Oh, what happened to him? Well, there's some who say he was washed overboard. And some who say he just vanished. But every sailor man's agreed that he still sails his spirit with a Clara M. And that sometimes you can hear him whistling. Gosh. There goes that foghorn again. Uh, do you believe the whistler still sails on the Clara M, Mr. Barnaby? Of course not, of course not. A silly superstition, lad. Nothing more, nothing more. Why did you sign on for this trip, Mr. Barnaby? Uh, well, Mr. Kidd, I, I needed a berth. And I take no stock in superstition. Does the whistler come at any time, Mr. Barnaby, or, or does his whistle mean something? Well, I just said... Mr. That... Barnaby, I've had enough of this stupid talk. Why, sir, I was that nearly... That will be all, mister. Yes, sir. Uh, more potatoes, lad? Uh, no, thank you. Wait. The whistler. Nonsense, lad. It's just Whoever's the wh- whistling is standing right outside on deck. I suggest we... Wait, go- matey. He's moving off. Come on, follow me. If it's one of the crew, I want to know about it. Are you coming, Captain? Aye, I'll come. But it's nothing but Tommy Rock, I tell you. Tommy Rock. Seems to be off down the deck there, toward the bow. Come along. I can't see your hand in front of you, Miss Fogg. Whoever's whistling is getting farther away all the time. Let's hurry, mate. You don't want to lose him. Gosh, what with this fog and that strange whistling up ahead, why should anybody be whistling at a time like this? It may be a warning, lad. A warning? Oh, now I've done it when I've had orders from Captain Hawkins to say never a word. You mean that whistling may be a warning of something about to happen? I just said, mate, that when you hear the whistler... Wait. It's gone. I don't hear it any longer. Neither do I. It seems to... What's that? Oh. Cry for help. Behind us. Where's the captain? He must have dropped back. Come along, lad. Mr. Kane. Right with you. Oh. You may be right with him, Jim. This is beginning to look more and more like a job for Superman. I've got a feeling Captain Hawkins went overboard, and I'd better check on that right now. Ah. Good thing my eyes can pierce this fog. Strange things happening on board this ship. Very strange. Wait. There he is. Floundering in the water, astern of us. Only one thing to do. Skim out over the water and bring him back here on deck before he knows what's happened to him. Up! Up! And away! Mr. Kent! Mr. Kent, where are you? This way, Jimmy! Mr. Barnaby! I found the captain! Uh, What happened to him? Uh, Uh, What happened? I'd like to know. You're you're ringing wet. Uh, I must have slipped and gone over the rail. Yeah, or perhaps you were pushed. No, no, I, I fell. But holy mackerel, if you fell overboard, how'd you get back on deck? Uh, I, I don't know. Somehow, I, I, I remember someone holding me up in the water. Then and everything went black. Well, I, I'd best take you below, sir. Uh, Come along, I'll give you a hand. Need any help, Mr. Barnaby? Oh, no, I can manage. I'll take you. Sir, we have no fear. There you are. Hey, now, there. Me. What do you make of all this? Whistler and then Captain Hawkins falling overboard. I don't know, Jimmy. One thing I do know. I don't think Captain Hawkins fell overboard. Huh? No sea captain ever fell off a ship. A deliberate attempt was made on his life, and he knows it, yet he tried to pretend otherwise. Gosh, that doesn't make sense. That's not the only thing that doesn't make sense. There's something strange about Captain Hawkins signing on this crew. There's something strange about our first mate, Mr. Barnaby. But why? I don't know, Jimmy. But I'm going to make it my business to find out. Seven bells, all well. Yes, seven bells, but all is not well. Not well at all. And who can say that we did not hear the whistler? Certainly it was not imagination on our part. 
his strange whistle came to us on deck and then receded from us. I wonder, shall we hear it again? Whether we do or not, no doubt exists that there are many adventures in store for us on our trip around... Oh, hi, mate. Huh? Oh, hello, Jimmy. Just banging out the last few lines of my first article for the Daily Planet. Well, you sure ought to have enough to say in it. Why, the things that have been happening aboard this ship. Well, I've had to play some of it down, such as the captain falling overboard. Play it down? Mm-hmm. What for? Well, in the first place, it would just wouldn't do to say the captain had fallen overboard because that never happens. In the second place, he didn't fall. Oh, but he did, Mr. Kent. Now, he... Jimmy, the captain didn't just fall. He was pushed or thrown overboard. But he himself said I know, that... I know. That's what bothers me. Something strange about Captain Hawkins, Jim. Matter of fact, there seems to be something strange about practically everything aboard this ship. Oh, you mean the whistler, huh? Well, that's one of them. I've said in my article here that it might have been our imagination playing tricks, but... Well, we both know, Jim, that we did hear that whistle last night. Oh, we sure did. Gosh, I've never heard anything so ghostly and, and eerie. And it was all of that. Just remember one thing, Jim. There are no such things as ghosts. Yeah, I know, but... Boy, if Superman were with us on this trip, he'd solve this mystery of the whistler in no time. <laughs> you still believe that Superman fairy tale? Gosh, there you go again, Mr. Kent. I tell you, Superman does... All right, does. Jim, all right. We won't argue about it. Finish your lessons for today? Yes, sir. I solved those algebra equations you gave me and finished my English lesson. Good. I wrote a composition about Teak Barnaby. Oh, character sketch of the first mate, eh? What did you say about him? Well, I just put down exactly what I think about him. I said he was a fierce-looking man with a wooden leg and that he looked like he'd make a swell pirate. That he was a swell guy Ah, and... easy there, Jimmy. You're overworking that word, swell. It's slang, you know, and you mustn't use it too much. Gee, that's right. I'll watch it, Mr. Kent. Good. Oh, say, there's Captain Hawkins up ahead with a helmsman. Let's go have a word or two with him, huh? Sure. Say, do you still think it was kind of queer of Teak Barnaby signing on the way he did? Something funny about that whole setup, Jimmy. Don't forget Captain Hawkins had spent days trying to get a crew. No one would sign on. And suddenly, within an hour, Teak Barnaby signs on and with him an entire crew. It does seem kind of funny. I like him and all, and yet sometimes I get a feeling when he's looking at me with those burning eyes of his... Well, it's hard to explain. Yeah, I know what you mean. Hello there, Mr. Kent. Jimmy. Hi, Hi Captain. Captain. Beautiful day. Hi, perfect sailing weather. And the old Clara M hasn't lost any of her spark. She answers to your hand like a raisin shell. Jim, lad, can you box the compass for me? Oh, gosh, not yet, Captain Hawkins. I had a lot of other studying to do this morning, but I'll get to it this afternoon. Have you seen Mr. Barnaby about? Hi, Mr. Kent, I have. He's aloft in the crow's nest. Oh. Aloft? How on earth did he get there? <laughs> if it's his wooden leg you're thinking of, forget it. It doesn't bother him a bit. Dick Barnaby is as much at home in the rigging as he is on deck. Hey, look, laddie, how would you like to take the wheel? Me? Aye. Oh, gosh. Councilman, let the lad take over. Uh, Captain, are you sure it'll be all right? Aye, uh, she handles like a baby, Mr. Kent. Nothing to fear. Uh, keep both hands on the wheel now, Jim, lad. Gosh. What? She's alive. I can feel a whole ship pulsing and pulling. Aye, lad. You've got to take the wheel to know your vessel. <laughs> easy there, lad. Easy, steady as she goes. Gosh. Sail up there started to flap something off. Uh, you've got to keep the wind up after beam, lad. Oh, oh yes, sir. Uh, aye, sir. That is... Uh, before you let Jim do any real steering, Captain, you better explain most of these nautical expressions to us. <laughs> if we're not careful... Look out! Be... Uh, quick, man! Uh, 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 what happened? Uh, that belaying pin came down from aloft. Shut the deck where I'd been standing. Mr. Kent, if you hadn't pulled me out of the way, I'd be a dead man. Aloft there, you blasted me, made it son of a squishy! Oh! oh dear. That's you, Mr. Barnaby! Barnaby. On deck, you... you... Oh, if only the lad wasn't here so I could express myself. Here comes Mr. Barnaby now. Gosh, look at him slide down that rope. Sheet, lad. Sheet, not rope. And mind your helm. Support. Support. Oh, I don't know what to... Helmsman, take over. All right, all right, lad. I've got it. Well, mister, what have you to say for yourself? I beg your pardon, Captain. I don't think you mean it. You know what I mean right enough, Mr. Barnaby. That belaying pin fell from aloft. It would have killed me if Mr. Kent here hadn't pulled me out of the way. Well, uh, how he saw it coming as being... Lion pin? Uh, Tell from a lot, eh? Well, now let me see. Well, blast my eyes if it ain't gone. Gone? What's gone, Mr. Barnaby? Why, sir, I stuck a belaying pin in my belt before going aloft, and it ain't there now. Must have, uh, must have fallen out. Such carelessness is inexcusable, man. I'll not have it aboard my ship. You understand? Aye, sir. Blast my eyes. I can't fathom it. I've never dropped a belaying pin before. Be careful you don't again. Huh? Oh. Aye, sir. I want the foretopmast staysail dropped. 
Lay forward to the men, Mr. Barnaby. Aye, sir, aye. Wait, sir. Wait, Well, I, I can't thank you enough for saving my life, Mr. Kent. I must say, you were on the alert. Yes, Captain. Something we'd all better learn to do aboard this ship. Well, your answers to those algebra equations are perfect, Jim. Now, suppose we examine you on English history. All set. We'll do this quickly. It's almost time you were in bed. Yeah. I sure am sleepy. It must be the salt air or something. Mm, probably. All right, now, English history. What does 1066 mean to you? Oh, gosh, that's easy. In 1066, Edward the Confessor died and Harold was chosen king. During that same year, Harold defeated the King of Norway at Stamford Bridge. Later, William, the Duke of Normandy, defeated Harold near Hastings. And that's really the most important thing that happened in 1066 because it marked the beginning of the Norman conquest of England. That's fine, Jimmy. Now, tomorrow I want you to read the next chapter, which takes up the completion of the Norman conquest. Okay, but right now, Mr. Kent, if you don't mind, I'm going to hop into bed. I'm kind of tired. All right, Jimmy. I'm going to step out on deck for a breath of air before I turn in. Uh Uh-huh. Well, good night. Good night, Jim. Ah, the air's good. Beautiful night. I'll just take a walk about deck. Four bells. Ten o'clock. Funny, I can't get that incident of this afternoon out of my mind. Doesn't make sense. Barnaby letting a belaying pin fall like that and then pretending he didn't know it had fallen. Hello. Sounds like Barnaby now. Talking to someone in the shadow of the fifty. I don't think it would hurt to find out what he's saying. I'll just slip you'll along quietly. Get right. told, along me. That understood? You'll do as you're told. I'm telling you, I heard the finest day it was. A ghost named Whistle, if ever I got one. It took me to come on aboard this ship, Bones, but you ain't talking me out of getting over to help me. You mention that name of Bones again, and I'll break your neck. My name's Barnaby aboard the ship. Take Barnaby, and don't you forget it. Barnaby, I'm bound as all one with me. As long as I get off this tub. Last my eyes, lie me, I've a good mind to. How you listen? I'm paying you and every man jack aboard a good price for what you're doing. And I'll not have you still in your mouth about ghosts and such things. You'd best take care, Limey. Or it'll go hard with you. Oh, it was bummy to swim on the ship in the first place. You're on now, and you'll do as I say. I'll get below. Let me take your car. Get below. I spoil my plans, will you? Not while I'm alive and kicking. Oh. Is that you, Mr. Kent? Uh, yes, Barnaby. Good evening. Taking the air, are you? Before turning in? Yes. Well, good night to you, sir. Good night, Barnaby. Good night. Ten sixty six, William the Conqueror, Battle of. Gosh, I've been trying to get to sleep ever since Mr. Kent left the cabin over an hour ago. Thought I was sleepy too. All those dates of English history keep running through my mind. Gee, it's kind of mysterious lying here in this cabin with the creek and. What? That sounded like. It is. A whistler. Oh, now it's moving off down the deck. Gosh, I'm scared. But I can't let that stop me. Got to investigate. Got to find out whether the whistler is human or whether it's a ghost. Yeah. Got to pull myself together and follow that whistle. Ah, uh, 1066, William the Conqueror. Doggone it, all those dates of English history keep running through my mind. Battle of Hastings. Uh, oh, gosh. It sure is kind of mysterious lying here in this cabin with the creak in the... What? That sounded like... It is. It's the whistler. Now it's moving off down the deck. Gosh, I'm scared. But I can't let that stop me. We've got to find out who that whistler is, that's all. got to prove it isn't the spirit of a whistling seaman who was washed overboard years ago, like Tate Barnaby says. Yeah. i got to pull myself together and follow that whistle. Mm. This is 
moving up forward. Gosh, it's kind of eerie out here. Maybe I better go get Mr. Kent. But if I do that, the whistle may stop the way I did the first time we heard it. But it... wait. There's somebody climbing up into the rigging. You! Stop! Stop where you are! Whoever he is, he's right up there above me. Well, I can't climb any further than the top of the mast, so I'm going to climb up there after him. Gosh, this is hotter than I thought. The rigging seems like it was alive. Well, I almost slipped in. That shadowy figure. He's right above me. He's about to have stopped. He's not going any higher. Hey! Aloft there! Come on down! You're caught and you can't get away! He's right above me now. So dark here, I can't see him. Just a second. Oh! My hand! Hey, stop it! You're stepping on my hands! I said stop it! I can't hold on! You hear? I'll fall! Stop! I'm falling! Oh! I've got you. Hold tight. You're safe now. You're safe. Superman. Super. Oh! Good thing I was walking about the deck and heard him calling. Oh, what on earth he was doing up in the rigging. I'd better get him down on deck again. Now. Down! Uh, kid's fainted. Better get him back to the cabin as Clark Kent. Oh, there. Yeah. What is it? Uh, this way, Barnaby. Something's happened to Jimmy. Huh? Oh, bless my eyes. The lad. Well, what is it? I don't know. I found him lying on the deck here as I came around. Oh, he's out colder than the mackerel. Better take him below. No, his cabin will do. I'll carry him. You lead the way, Mr. Kent. All right. Yeah. Got gotcha, you, lad. Can't yeah. imagine what could have happened to him. Oh, we'll know as soon as he comes around. Ah, here's the cabin. Yeah. Put him on the bed there. I'll get some water. Well, uh, hey, look at his hands. They're bruised. Skin's broken in places, too. Yeah, it looks as if they've been stepped on. Oh. That's funny. The whistler. Gotta follow. I gotta find out. The whistler? Blast my eyes, Mr. Kent. I, I do believe it. All right, it. now, Jim, snap out of it. Come on, now. Oh, oh. it's you, Mr. Kent. Oh. Well, what happened to you, lad? Uh, who done this to you? The whistler. I was trying to go to sleep when I heard him whistling outside my cabin. I followed and I saw somebody go up into the rigging. When, when I got close to him, he stepped on my hands. I had to let go. What? You mean you fell from the rigging onto the deck? We'd best call the captain to look him over, Mr. Kent. If any bones is no, broken. No, I, I didn't hit the deck. Superman caught me as I was falling. Superman? And who might he be? Well, I'm afraid he's pretty much a character in Jimmy's imagination, Barnaby. Uh, gosh, Mr. Kent, you've got to believe me. He came flying through the air as I was falling and... Oh, easy does it, matey. I've heard many a wild sailor's yarn, but these fates are all. A man that can fly, eh? Why, lad, you've been dreaming. I'm telling the truth. How did my hands get this way, then, if they weren't stepped on? How'd I get down onto the deck without being hurt? Hey, the lad's got something there, Mr. Kent. I'd best look to the rigging and see if there's anyone up there. No, no, you stay here. I'll go. Hey, Mr. Kent. However you'll have it. I'll be back in a while. Hi, Mr. Kent. That you? Yes, Captain. I just heard about the lad and was coming to see what it's all about. Well, we found him lying on deck unconscious. He thought he heard the whistler and followed him up into the rigging. I've just come out to investigate. The whistler, eh? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, it's beyond me. The lad's either having dreams or... He wasn't dreaming, Captain, and you know it. Eh, what's that? Something very strange going on aboard this ship, Captain. And if you're not aware of it, you're not the man I think you are. I don't like your tone, Mr. Kent. I'm master of this vessel, and I, I make won't no stand... disrespect to your office, Captain. But it seems to me you're deliberately closing your eyes to a number of things that have happened on board. What things, Mr. Kent? What things? The whistler, for one. When Barnaby told us that legend last night about the spirit of a whistling sailorman haunting this ship, you tried to laugh it off. And then we heard the whistler... We didn't imagine it, Captain. We heard it. You and Barnaby and Jimmy and myself. Aye, aye, no denying that. Yeah, but you do deny that following that you were either pushed or thrown overboard. That you'd be dead now if I... Well, that is... Uh... If what, Mr. Kent? Well, if, if, if somebody hadn't miraculously saved you. You say I was pushed overboard, Mr. Kent. I say I fell. We won't argue it, Captain. Well, I can't pick out anyone or anything up in the rigging there. Whoever it was has had time to make a getaway. Whoever it was is still aboard this ship, Mr. Kent. I'll have the Clara M searched from stem to stern. Good idea, Captain. If you find out anything, I'll be in Jimmy's cabin. All right. Hmm. I wish I knew what's in that man's mind. Well, I'll get on into the cabin and see how Jimmy's doing. Well, 
lad was a murder shark coming for the native boy. I saw the monster turn, Billy upwards. Saw his great mouth reaching for the boy. And it was then I went into action. What's going on here? Oh, gosh, Mr. Kent, don't interrupt. Uh, go on, Mr. Barnaby. Oh, well, I dove off the side of that pearl fisher. In my hand was a knife, which I always carried with me. I struck for the shark's belly. But he turned too quick. And the knife went into his back, up to the hill. Then he dove. And I went with him, holding on to that knife handle. Blast my eyes. I, I was underwater a full five minutes. Five minutes? Hey, lad, five minutes. Gee. Well, I, I finally got the knife out of his back. And I struck for his belly again. But this time, he was too quick for me. He looked to windward and took my leg off clean as a whistle. Gosh. Well, what happened then? Well, I, I don't rightly remember, lad. Next thing I knew, I was lying on the deck of the pearl fisher. Oh, but how'd you get there? Well, lad, as often I puzzle my head about that, but never could figure it out. However, the answer was made clear to me this very night. I must have been... <laughs> Saved by Superman. Uh, quite a story, Dick. Mm, I thought you were telling me the real story of how you lost your leg. Well, okay. Both of you can kid all you want to about Superman, but I know he exists. That's all that matters to me. Uh, find anyone in the rigging, Mr. Kent? No, whoever it was, it had ample time to get away. The captain's having the ship searched thoroughly. Yeah, good idea. Now, Jimmy, try to go to sleep, will you? And if you hear the whistler again, I'd suggest you call me before doing anything about it. Yeah, don't worry, I will. All uh, right, good night. Coming, Barnaby? I'll walk with you as far as my cabin. Hey, night, lad. Was that really the way you lost your leg, Mr. Barnaby? A shark, I mean? No, lad. Wasn't no shark. I'll tell you the real story someday. Good night, dear. Good night. I wouldn't fill Jimmy's head with too many stories, Barnaby. No fear, Mr. Kent. So does the boy no harm? No, I suppose not. Uh, well, what do you make of this, uh, Superman business? The lad's no broken bones, and if he fell from the rig... No, I can't account for it. But he may not have fallen as far as he thought. Eh? Well, I'll leave you here. I'm going below. Good night, Barnaby. Good night. Well, I guess I'd better turn in myself. Oh, wait a minute. Now, that's odd. I wonder. Oh, I better have a talk with the man at the wheel. Uh, good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, beautiful night, isn't it? Hey, it is, sir. Uh, what's our course? South by east, sir. South by east? Hey, sir. You're off your course, then, helmsman. What? According to the position of the North Star, you're steering south by west. Hey, hey. I, I can't be, sir. I... Well, look at it. I got it, sir. You're right. Now, how could I do a thing like that? That's what I was wondering. Better put her over. Hey, sir, at once. And thank you, sir. Meant my life if the captain had found me. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Good night. Good night, sir. That man's either a fool or he was deliberately off his course. And I don't think he's a fool. man's either a fool or he was deliberately off his course. And I don't think he's a fool. I'd better talk to Captain Hawkins about this, and I'd better do it right now. Huh? May I come in, Captain? It's Clark Kent. By all means, Mr. Kent. Yeah, want a little chat before turning in, Mr. Kent? More than just a chat, Captain. Eh? Hey, something still troubling you? A good deal. Captain, what I expected to be more or less of a pleasure cruise is rapidly becoming a headache. I... I don't take your meaning, Mr. Kent. Excuse my bluntness, Captain, but I believe you do. Now, look here. Just a moment. I spoke earlier tonight about the strange things going on aboard this ship, and you pretended to know nothing about them. I did nothing of the sort. I merely refused to believe in such stupid nonsense as this legend of the Whistling Salem. I don't believe in superstitions, Mr. Kent. And therefore, I don't believe that the spirit of a whistling sailor comes back to haunt this ship. I don't believe it either. But someone is definitely trying to give the impression that he does. How much do you know about Teak Barnaby, your first mate? All I know is he's a good sailor. And that's all I care to know about any member of my crew. I'm afraid in this case that's not enough. 
Haven't you ever thought how strange it was that after so many men refused to sign on, Barnaby came along with a full crew in less than an hour? It's happened before. Are you accusing my first mate? I make no accusations until I can prove them, Captain. What course are we following? South by east for Panama. Mm Mm-hmm. And perhaps you can explain why the man at the wheel was following a course set for south by west. I don't believe it. I know a little something about navigation, Captain Hawkins. And I'm telling you, your helmsman was steering a course south by west. What I want to know is why. I still don't believe it. But there's only one way to find out. Come along, Mr. Kent. We'll see about this right now. Uh, well, there's a storm coming. Uh, the wind is kicking up a bit. Looks like a bad one, too. Better have the hatches battened down. Uh, helmsman's on his course all right now, Mr. Kent. Yes, but I don't think he'll deny having been off it. You'd better question him. I will, indeed. You there, helmsman. Aye, sir. Mr. Kent informs me you were off your course. Well, were you or weren't you? I sir, I, I was that. Huh? Explain that. Well, I... I... Kind of hard to explain, sir. The first time such a thing's happened to me in 30 years of sailing, sir. That's no explanation. Your course is sound by east. Mr. Kent says you were steering south by west. That's a full quarter turn of the rudder. Aye, sir. Well... I, I, I can't explain it, sir. Unless I was kind of dozing off, sir. You were awake when I talked to you. You got a galloping tongue. That'll do. I sir. All right. The only way I can explain it, sir, is that I, I must have dozed off. At, at which time I got off my course. And then when I woke up, it appears like mayhap I didn't realize. I'll have no sleeping on duty. Understand that? I sir. Sorry, sir. I'll let it go this time. But if it happens again, you'll go in irons and no mistake. Aye, sir. Now mind your wheel. Well, Mr. Kent, I hope that puts your fears at rest. The helmsman got off his course when he fell asleep. It won't happen again. I hope not. Well, good night. Good night, Mr. Kent. How he ever caught on. You fool. Why didn't you shift your course when you saw him coming? How was I to know he knew anything about navigation? He's a landlubber, ain't he? He's smarter than most. You might have realized it. We've got to be careful. He mustn't find out we've changed our course until it's too late for him to do anything about it. Well, I didn't... Never mind what you think. The next time he gets too close to you, shift your course for Sabah East. Right. He's going into his cabin for the night. You can put her over to Sabah West now. Right, sir. Maybe I was wrong about the helmsman, but somehow I've got a feeling that I wasn't. Well, time will tell. Better get on into my cabin. See, where is that light? What? Whoever's in this cabin, stand where you are. The light. Ah, there we are. Well, I'll be... What are you doing in my cabin, Mr. Barnaby? Well, don't go off the handle, Mr. Kent. I can explain everything. Better start right now, Barnaby. Well, I, I know it looks kind of strange to you, my being in your cabin like this, but the captain gave orders here, remember, to search the ship for the whistler. Well? I've been searching the cabin, looking in closets and under beds and all that, you know. Didn't think you'd mind if I had a look around. Around your cabin, matey? You usually look for something in the dark? Ah, he too, matey. You're off your course. I can see you don't trust me. I have little reason to trust you, Barnaby. Ah, matey. It's just that I didn't have time to put on the lights. Only came into this cabin a few minutes before yourself. Now that the light is on, I'll just have a look around. Don't bother. I'll search this cabin myself. Yeah, as you like, baby. I'll be leaving you. Hmm. There's a good deal going on aboard this ship that I don't understand. I've got a feeling I won't get far by questioning the crew or anyone else. Perhaps it wouldn't do any harm if I took a quick trip back to Metropolis and did a little investigation around the waterfront. Might pick up some information of value, something that might give me just the clue I need as to what's going on aboard the Clara M. 
As Superman, I can fly back to Metropolis, make my investigation, and return to the ship before anyone has a chance to know my absence. Storm struck us at last. Now, nothing to worry about. This isn't the Clara M's first storm, and it won't be her last. So, up, up! I see is that, mister. Nothing to worry us, however. I've sailed the Clarion through worse than this. Hatches batten down? Aye, sir. Uh, we've got to reef sail. This gale is too much. Aye, sir. Stand by the wind for braces. The time is here. He's off the head sheet. He's off the head sheet. Let me head sheet. Rise, sir. Rise, you scurvy sea horses. Put your backs to it. Stand to it! Stand to it! Pardon me! Pardon me! Better take a reef, no means. Hey, sir. Hodgkins! Mackey! Hodno! Donald! A lot to the mainsail, lads! Move, you monkeys! Move! A lot for the air! A lot! Let's go all the way up to water pack! Hold fast! There's a big one coming! Stand to the wheel there! Hold him up! Hold him up! What the... Land, what are you doing on deck? I, I couldn't sleep, sir. I went to look for Mr. Kent. He's not in his cabin, sir, and I thought he might be on deck. Well, he's not. Get below, Land. Hold fast! Hold fast, Land! Come on, Mr. Mind your helm, man. Right, sir. Right, Stephen. Up helm! Up helm! Got to reef more sail, mister. In there. All of you. A lot to the top down. Lively, low, lively. All right, you'd better get below. I don't think I can make it. Hey, the sea's kicking up worse right, since you got here. Here, here, give me a hand. What are you doing, Mr. Barnaby? They've got to lash you to the bridge. Taking no chances on you going overside. Oh, fast. Oh, fast. Here she comes. Barnaby, what was that? Flashed my eyes. The anchor cable slipped. You mean me on the windlass. Get that anchor up before she bashes in the side. Come on, hop to it. Put your bikes into it. Now then, all together. Eee! Eee! Can't budge The windlass is stuck, sir. Ah, oh, that devil take you all for a bunch of... Here, let me near that. Now then, all together. Eee! Oh! Oh, last it all. How about it, Mr. Barnaby? Well, they're right, sir. She's jammed. We can't get that anchor up there. Listen to that. It's the anchor swinging against the house. We've got to get that anchor up or lash her down, mister, before we're stove in. We'll never get her up. Flash my eyes. Someone's got to go overside and lash her down. That's your guy. Anybody gets caught between the tide of the ship and that anchor, you'll be cracked. Stop it. What? You ain't going to try it. Someone's got to do it. But that flashed anchor will break a hole in us big enough to send us to the bottom. Stand clear, man. I'm going over the side. We'll never get that anchor up. The windlass is jammed. Someone's got to go overside to lash her down. That's suicide, sir, and you know it. Anybody gets caught between the anchor and the side of the ship, he'll be crushed to death, sir. Hey, but it's got to be done, and... Stop it. Captain Hawkins, sir. What are you about? I'm going overside, Mr. Barnaby. You can't do it, sir. Someone's got to do it, Mr. Barnaby. But that confounded anchor will pass a hole in the side big enough to send us to the bottom. Stand clear, man. Captain Hawkins, say you'll be killed. If you get caught between that anchor and the side of the ship... The lad's right, Captain. Someone's got to go overside, but it can't be you. We need you here. Hey, your talk, Mr. Barnaby. I'm master of this vessel. You think I'll stand by and watch her pound it to pieces while you talk about what's to be done? Out of my way. Captain, you can't... Carry that line. And once you're here... I'll have you tossed in irons the minute we're out of this. Hey, sir. Here's the line, sir. Captain, you mustn't. Mr. Barnaby, make him listen to you. That anchor crashing against the side. If he gets caught between that and the ship... He knows the chances he's taking, lad. Get that line lashed around it in your waist, Captain. Hey, Mr. Barnaby. You there. Hand me that cable. Hey, sir. Uh, Captain, you mustn't do it. Somewhere hey, in the... Hey, I know what I'm about. Hey. Oh, fast. There's another big... Oh! Oh! Turn the lad on the back. He ships some water. Hey, all right, now, lad, all right. Oh, oh. Yeah. I'm all right now. Smell of a lot of water. Yeah, he'll be all right. We've got a few minutes before the next one. Grab that line, you man, that'll haul me over the side. Lively there. Come on, take it. Lively. Oh, my sight, you almost fire. I'll screw you off the yard now. 
Ready, Ready, Captain. Ready. Hey, good luck, sir. And watch that anchor. You watch the men on that line, mister. And leave the anchor to me. Hold hard, lads. I'm thrown over. Gosh, I hope he's going to be all right. It's getting worse, Mr. Barnaby. A lot worse. We're healing over. Watch that line, lads. Hold hard. The captain, is he all right? Yes. He's trying to get the cable around the anchor. If you can just hold it for a few minutes and... Hold fast. And then the deal with him, please. Oh. Captain Hawkinson. Captain. Captain's all right. He's still there. Look to the lad. What? Ah, uh, uh, ship water again. Hey, sir. I'm all right now. The captain, Mr. Barnaby. Uh, he's all right. But he's lost his grip on the anchor. Blow me down if I had more than one leg. Look out for you. Captain. Hello there. Keep your eye on that anchor. Captain. The anchor. The anchor. Captain. Mr. Barnaby. Mr. Barnaby. Uh, it got him. Couldn't get out of the way in time. Bring him up, lads. Bring him up. Look to it. Lay me. Heave. Heave. One more. One more and he's over. Why, he's as white as fish belly. Captain Hawkins. Uh, never mind me. The anchor. Oh. Get somebody. Where was my quick? Why did he get you? Are you hurt bad? Uh, my chest. Something broken inside me. But never mind. Get that anchor lashed down. Get it lashed down. And been done, sir. We got to take our chances on it. I won't ask anyone else to take the risk. And I can't take it myself. I believe that you. Yes, you go below, sir. We'll be taken to the boats for so long, and you'd better be ready to go with us. I'll not go below. I'll not go below. If someone goes over side to save my ship, she's my ship, you hear? Mine. And I'll not see her go down. Gosh, did you hear the anchor that time? It sounded like wood splinter. Uh, the hull's gone. Caving in. Oh, if only Superman were here. What? What time is it? Almost eight bells, sir. Midnight. Uh, five, five hours till dawn. We'll never, never last that long. We'll last. Now you've got to get below, sir. I'll not go below, I tell you. So someone goes over his side. Bless my eyes, Captain. I told you. You told me. You told me. This is my ship, mister. And by heavens, I'll give the orders. Nobody's questioning your right to give orders. Yeah, somebody's right. got to go over side. Somebody's got to lash that anchor down. All right, all right. I'll go myself. Now, will you go below? Uh, uh, you find me only one leg. Never one mind leg. my leg. Never no, mind anything. He ain't like... near you, sir. He's fainted. Huh? All right. Get him along. All right, sir. I'm lively about it. Come on. There. Get that line off the captain's waist and take him along. Mr. Barnaby, you don't mean you're going to do it. You can't go over the side. Devil, I can. It's a wooden leg I've got, Glad. Not a wooden body. Just let me get this line lashed around me. And see you. I'll show you a trick or two. All right, now you mean? Get me over the side. Mr. Barnaby, you can't do it. No, you can't do it. Lay to the line. Lay to. I'll break your skulls and set pieces. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, hold that line, lads. Uh, hold with him. Uh, steady. Steady, does it. Look, stop below there, sir. Find the anchor, sir. We're healing over. Mr. Barnaby. Mr. Barnaby, sir. Oh, please. Uh, go ahead. If it touch me, I'll have that cable around there in short order. How does he look, Mr. Barnaby? Hey, this side's starting to go. There's small hole, Master. Ain't serious. And it will be if I don't let the... Bless my eyes. Last the seventeen, and hang me for a cutthroat fire. What's the matter? Billy! He slipped. The wooden leg got stuck in a hole. Yes, sir. His leg's caught. Didn't you hear Barnaby's caught down there? Hold him up, lad. Hold him up line now. Please! Oh. Easy on that line. You'll pull him in half. Can't you see his leg's caught down there? Oh, can he get loose? He's trying. But if that anchor starts swinging again... Yeah, he's finished if it does. But look! Seats the boat. We're healing over again. The anchor! Barnaby! I can't get loose! I can't get oh, loose! the anchor. It's swinging away from the side again. Hey, when we heal back again! Look out! Uh, there she comes! Uh, uh, He's finished. He's done for. Nothing can save him now. Meanwhile, several hundred miles away in Metropolis, Superman in the guise of Clark Kent pursues his investigation in a waterfront tavern. Shipped aboard the Clara M from 1910 to 1917, eh? Hey, I heard him. You knew Captain Hawkinson pretty well, eh? Hey. Well, then tell me, what sort of... Very on, lad. 
taking a reef in my tongue till I see the color of your money. Oh, well, I promised you $10 if you'd give me the information I wanted. Hey, yeah, you did. Very well. Here's a $10 bill. Mm. Thank you, lad. Now, now hold on, on that, sailor. You'll get half of this $10 bill now and the other half when you tell me what I want to know. There you are. When you tell me all I want to know, the other half is yours. Hey, that's fair enough. Let's fly with your questions, lad. Tell me what you know about Captain Hawkins. Captain Hawkins? Mm-hmm. Let me see now. Good master, Hawkins. Bit easy going in some ways, but stern enough in others. Bachelor he was, never married. But said he was married to one thing, and that was the Clara Am. That's so? He often said if the Clara Am was taken from him, it'd be like losing his own life. Aye, lad. The Clara Am was his life. I see. Anything else? Well, no, there... No. No, not that I know of. So if you'll just let me have the other half of the tenor... Now, I... wait just a minute. Tell me, what do you know about the whistler? Hey, I've got to be going. It's almost midnight and my ship is sailing in less than half an hour. Good night to you, lad. Wait a minute now. Don't forget I've still got the other half of that ten dollars. And you may keep it for all of me. Now, hold on here. All I want to know is whatever you can tell me about the legend of the whistler and the ten dollars is yours. And I'll never own it, lad. Whatever I know about the whistler, I'm keeping to myself. And you can lay to this. You'll not find a sailor man anywhere who'll be willing to talk about it for any amount. Good night to you. Hey, wait a minute. Here, you can have the other half. And thank you. Ah, thank you, lad. You're a good man, so I'll be giving you a tip. In a friendly kind of way, mind you. Steer your course away from asking questions about the whistler. It'll do you no good. Or anyone else. Good night to you. Good night. Well, all I managed to find out was the Captain's most insane love for his ship. I'm also convinced that there's more behind the legend of the Whistler than anyone is willing to tell. Well, I'm going to be getting back to the Clara M. Hmm. No sign of a storm here, but there's probably a big one raging out at sea right this minute. Hmm. Twelve o'clock. I better change to Superman and get back to the Clara M. Up! Up! Leg stuck in the hole on the side of the ship. If that anchor starts swinging again. Barnaby's finished if it does. Seats above, we're over again. Barnaby, look sharp, man. Don't get caught between the anchor and the side of the ship. I can't get loose. Can't move. Can't get my leg loose. The anchor, it's swinging away from the side of the ship again. Aye, and when we heel over, she'll crush Barnaby against the side of the ship. Look, there she comes. The anchor's breaking down on us. Mr. Barnaby, Mr. Barnaby. Try to haul him on board, I guess. All right, lad. Uh, Let go of that line. What's that? Sounds like Mr. Barnaby. Barnaby? Hello, Mr. Barnaby. Are you all right, sir? Am I all right? I'm eating sick. Hold me aboard. I'll tell you. Hold me aboard. What is it? What did he say? His leg is smashed. Oh. All right, lad. Let go of that line. Uh, we got to get him back here on deck. Uh, he. Oh, he's... Oh, man! Big wave coming! Oh, man! Every man check goes in iron. Let me dangle all my sails and drown with you. By the great horn pool, I'll hang you off from the yard arm, so help me, Hannah. I got you up as fast uh, as we could, Mr. Barnaby. Uh, he'll haul me, would you? Uh, Who's responsible for leaving me dangling there when that wave stuck, eh? Speak up. Speak up. Sorry, sir. It couldn't be helped. I'd better get you below and see what we can do for your leg. Nothing wrong with my leg that a saw can't fix. Saw? Eh? Get the saw off the broken part. And spike a new piece onto it. But, but gosh, Mr. Barnaby, there's no surgeon aboard ship. Sergeant, sergeant. What do I want with a surgeon? What I need is a ship's carpenter. Oh, you mean it's your wooden leg that got crushed. Eh? What other leg would it be? But never mind that now. Is that blasted anchor we've got to worry about? Mr. Barnaby, sir, I'll try nothing. You'll try nothing. There ain't a thing we can do. Listen to it. That anchor's alive. Any man tries to lash it down will be crushed. Hey, just like Captain Hawkins. Just like me leg here. Hey, there's only one thing to do. What's that, Mr. Barnaby? We've got to send a call of distress. At the right, rate that anchor is crashing against the side, there'll be a hole in us big enough to sail a barking through. 
In less than ten minutes. It's in the call of distress. Hey, blow me down. I laughed when I heard Captain Hawkins had installed a wireless room aboard ship. Had to, by law, I understand. But he'll haul me for a line lover if I ain't glad of it now. Get him out of it! Get him out of it! Hey, what is water. it? There's water pouring into the hole. Hey, that anchor's starting to do her work, all right. Man the pumps! Man the pumps! Hey, get to the wireless room and tell the operator to start sending it. Hello, aye, sir. It'll do no good, I fear. No ship can reach us in time. Gosh, Mr. Barnaby, do you think we're going to... Hold fast. Oh, gosh, look at that wave coming. Up him! Up him! Just swap us if you're not careful. Up him and hold fast. As the thunderous wave crashes down on the battered decks of the Clara M, Superman, returning from Metropolis, flies low over the turbulent sea. Listen. I should reach the Clara M in another ten minutes. The storm seems to be pretty bad, but I don't believe there's anything to worry about. The Clara M's a good staunch vessel. Take more than a storm like this to do her any damage. However, I'll feel a lot better when I... Wait. What's that? Morse cold. Keen as my ears are, I can barely hear it. Just try to catch the message. Wait. That's a ship in distress. Listen. 80 degrees north. 140, 140 degrees south. C L A R A F. The Clara M. She's in distress. I am needed. Faster! Faster! Signal, sir. No responses yet. Well, I doubt it'll do any good anyway. That anchor's pounding us to splinters. Better man about to make ready to lower away. Aye, aye, sir. Gosh, Mr. Barnaby, if things are that bad, I'd better try to find Mr. Kent. Mr. Kent can take care of himself, and you can't. You stay as place to that main bridge till I say so. We can only get that anchor on deck, but we can't. Look, and... up there, coming through that cloud. What? See? Red cloak streaming in the wind. It's Superman, Mr. Barnaby. It's Superman. What? I don't see... Over there. Look, he's diving toward the ship. He's diving toward us. Well, the lad's gone daft out of his mind. It's Superman, I tell you. Superman. Now hold fast. There's another wave coming. But well, there's nothing to worry about now. Superman's here. He'll save it. Confound <laughs> you. I told you to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> you ship water again. I'll be all right. But Superman... You're out of your mind, lad. You... Well, I'll be... Mr. Barnaby. Mr. Barnaby. There, on the deck. Hey... I see it. It's the anchor. The anchor's laying on the deck. Sure it is. And Superman did it. Superman, nothing. It was that wave that carried it on deck. That last wave that struck it. It wasn't. The wave that was Superman, I tell you. Superman, no, the wave, lad. The anchor's on deck. And that's all that matters. You men there. Lash that anchor down. Lively now. Step to it. We're out of danger now, Mr. Barnaby. There's Superman nearby. We're well nigh out of danger now. Without your so-called Superman. Carpenter... And the last thing, get us that hole in uh, outside now without fear of the anchor crashing through at him. Oh, you there, Chips. Hey, Mr. Bellamy. You go below at once and stop catching that hole in the side. Uh, good, lads. With the anchor lashed down now, we've little to fear. The Clara M will ride out the storm with little trouble. Mr. Ken, Mr. Ken, is that you? Yes, Jim. Hello, Barnaby. Where? Mr. Ken. And where have you been? Hello, helping some of the men lash down the cargo. There was some danger of it slipping. Yeah, the first I have heard of it. I was just told about the captain. How is it? Well, we don't know, Mr. Kent. He was taken below about ten minutes ago, and we've been on deck since then. I've got to go below and have a look at him. Oh, I'll come with you. Can you untie me here, Mr. Barnaby? I lied. You could have untied yourself. Just pull this line. So, uh, there you are. Oh, gosh, you'll have to show me how to make a knot like that. Now, come along, lad. I'm not needed on deck for a time. I'll join you below. You know the helmsman. Stand to that wheel. All right, Mr. Kent. Jim, lad. Get this is Captain Hawkins' cabin, Barnaby. Hey, Mr. Kent. Let's go in. I'm glad you come, Mr. Barnaby. Captain's thinking fast, sir. Eh? Well, let's have a look at him. Captain. Captain. Can you hear me? Bad mm-hmm. uh, business, this. Just a minute, Barnaby. I know a little something about these things. 
Oh, pulse very low. Aspiration heavy. The anchor hit him a heavy but glancing blow, you say? Aye. He said something inside him was broken. Uh, let's get that shirt off him. Give me Aye. a hand here, will you? Take it easy. Be careful now. That's it. Gosh. Look at that bruise on his chest. Yes, it looks bad. Well, how much do you know about doctoring, Mr. Kane? Not very much, but I'd at least be able to tell if any bones are... Uh, several of his ribs have been crushed, that's certain. Well, what's to be done? How far are we from the nearest port? Well, if you're thinking of getting him to a doctor, we'll never make it. I've seen men go afore, Mr. Kent, and Captain Hawkins can't last much longer. Radio room, Captain, sir. Eh? Made contact, sir, with the San Jose, South American liner bound for Caracas. She's 90 miles off Port Bean, but steering for us right now, sir. We well, won't need her. Radio back and tell her to go along and away. Wait a minute. Is there a doctor on board the San Jose? Well, more than likely, sir. She's a passenger liner. That won't do any good, Mr. Kent, by the time they reach us, and that'll be hours from now. The captain here will be gone. He hasn't got a chance. He's got a chance if we'll give it to him. What do you mean, then, Mr. Kane? No time to explain, Barnaby. You, Sparks, Jim, Barnaby. Here, yeah, give me a hand here. We've got to get Captain Hawkins into the radio room. Well, blow me down if I see what you... Mr. Kent, you're not meaning... I am, Barnaby. It's our only hope. We'll be taking a desperate chance, Barnaby. But... Take it. You, clear that table off quickly. Never mind, I'll do it. Jim Lyon. Lend a hand here. Hi, Mr. Barnaby. What are you planning to do, Mr. Kent? No time to explain, Barnaby. Oh, where's the wireless operator? Here, sir. Oh. Get in touch with that South American liner bound for Caracas. Find out if there's a doctor aboard. I uh, Blow me down if he's planning to do what I think he... Barnaby! Huh? Where are the medical stores kept? In the captain's cabin. Oh. Uh, you there. Right, sir. Uh, get down to his cabin and bring up all the bandages you can find. Also, iodine and curacrome, and see if there's any sort of anesthetic. Yeah. Sure, now I'm willing to help you, sir, if I could only understand you. Now, what was it you'd be wanted again? All those long names. Uh, you see Jim, you? Jim, you know what I want. Now, go down with this man and see if you can find him. Right, Mr. Kent. How about instruments? Well, there must be a few scalpels and that sort of thing. Bring everything you can find. Aye, aye, sir. Okay, Mr. You better come with me. Mr. Kent, I'll take you to answer one question for me. Yes, what is it, Barnaby? Just what is it you're up to? What are you going to do? Wait a minute. There's an answer from the other ship. Sparks, is there a doctor on board? No, I haven't said yet, sir. I'll ask again. You haven't answered my question, Mr. Kent. What is it you're planning to do? With the assistance of that doctor on the other ship, if there is one, I'm going to operate on Captain Hawkins. You what? You heard me. Are you out of your mind? I don't think so. You can't operate. Barnaby, I've got to. It's our only chance. Now, come along. Help me get these clothes off him. Just take hold of... What's wrong with you, Barnaby? Why are you looking at me that way? I don't like it, that's what. Don't be a fool, Barnaby. Hawkins won't last if we don't do something. You think I'm anxious for this? The only chance we've got for saving him, I've got to take it. That liner, the San Jose, is heading for us now. She'll reach us in four hours. Oh, he won't last that long. How do you know? For heaven's sake, Barnaby, look at him. Feel his pulse. I'm no doctor, neither are you. Lay one hand on him, Mr. Canton. I... And what? And you'll pay for it. We got the stuff, Mr. Canton. Bandages, iodine, ether, and scalpels. Ether? No, that'll be a great help. There was a bottle of it in the medical chest. Excuse me, sir. There's a doctor on the San Jose. He's standing by. Oh, good. Here, you, sailor. Hi. Huh? Take this iodine and swab the captain's chest with it. Hi, sir. I'll help, Mr. Kent. No, no, Jim. You and Barnaby step outside, will you? You can't do this. If anything happens to the step captain... Step outside, I said. San Jose, standing by, sir. Ship doctor ready. Tell the doctor on the San Jose this. The captain of the Clara M is sinking fast, and we've got to do what we can to save him. Several ribs have been broken and are exerting inward pressure. What shall we do? We are awaiting instructions. Huh? What does he say? An unusual situation, but understand fully. Can Captain possibly hold out till we reach you? Tell him no. He says, you must proceed. Good luck. Instructions? Yes. Have at hand all gauze available. We got it. Go on. Administer ether with extreme care. Drop by drop. Right. Sailor, make a pad of gauze and place it over the captain's nose. I do. Barnaby, I told you to step outside. You too, Jimmy. Hey, I'll go. I want no hand in this. Come along, lad. You and me. We'll step outside. The doctor's message seems complete now, sir. 
All right. Read it to me. Slowly. Yes. Hey, I'm glad we're not in there, Mr. Barnaby. I'd rather not watch. Yeah, don't blame you, lad. It's a grave risk Mr. Kent's taken in there. A grave risk. I sure admire him. You know, it's funny. Mr. Kent seems such a quiet, shy sort, and... I've seen him do things that take more nerve. Yeah, it takes a strange kind of nerve to kill a man. What are you talking about? The captain might have a chance if we waited for that liner to reach us. He wouldn't have the ghost of a chance, and you know it. Mr. Kent's doing what he thinks is right. I only hope he's successful at it. He'd better be. That's all I say. If the captain don't pull through, I'll be master of the ship. Then you'll find Mr. Kent will pay for what he's about. Captain will pull through. He's got to. Gosh, I, I can't let myself think of what's going on in there, on that table. <sighs> Me neither. Uh, did, uh, did I ever tell you the story, lad, of how, uh, of how I lost my leg? No. Not, not the real story, anyway. Well, it, uh, it was like this. I had shipped as first mate aboard the Gloucester, a fishing schooner bound for the Great Bank of Nova Scotia. And that is the true story of how old Teak Barnaby lost his leg off the Grand Fishing Banks of Nova Scotia. Shortly after that, I, uh... Well, Adia, you're not listening. Huh? What? I haven't heard anything from inside there for a long time. Uh, you're right. I ain't heard no radio messages flying back and forth from ship to ship in some time myself. Well, I guess it's like I said. Kent. Mr. Kent. Gosh, you look... You look... It's all over, Jim. You mean... Captain Hawkins will live. At least until that liner reaches us. Holy mackerel. Gee, that, that's well. That's well, Mr. Kent. Yes, I... I'm glad, too. Huh, from the sound of things, the storm's let up a bit, too. You better go on deck and check things over, Barnaby. Aye, uh, sir, I... I, uh... I, I'd like to say I was wrong, sir. I'm fair sorry I got in your way and instead of helping you. That's all right, Barnaby, I understand. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. I, uh, I, uh, I'll go on deck now. You look pretty tired, Mr. Kent. Uh, I am, Jim. Well, you've got nothing to worry about now, so you can get to bed and get some rest. Captain Hawkins will probably be okay, and the storm's over, and... What is it, Mr. Kent? Why do you look so funny? storm's over, Jimmy? <laughs> I've got a feeling it's only just begun. And Clark Kent's powers of intuition are right as always. For at this very same moment, in the forecastle of the Clara M, trouble is indeed brewing. Listen. Hey, we've all got our next news for fire. Wait a minute now, Davey. Wait a minute. Hey, don't follow your meaning. Don't take my meaning, eh? Well, listen to me, all of you. There's a South American liner, the San Jose, steaming for us right now, ain't there? What's going to happen when the captain of that liner sees us, eh? He's going to recognize us, that's what. Recognize every man jack of us, he will. How you be sure of that line? No, you ain't sure. But I ain't for taking chances, neither, I ain't. Every one of us on this here ship is wanted by the maritime authorities. Irish there jumped ship in Montevideo, didn't they? What about you, sweet, eh? You bashed in the skull of the second mate aboard a tanker three months ago. What'll happen when the authorities get their hands on you, I'd like to know. We've all got our necks and noses, and I ain't one for letting them tighten it. Let's take this ship, I says. Sail her where we want to sail her before that liner comes alongside us. By the saints, lady, we can't do it. It's no, no, no. working for Teak Barnaby, we are. It's his money we're taking. And there's nothing we can do till we talk to him about it. Talk to Barnaby? What for? We're a hunted crew on a haunted ship, so we are. You've all heard the whistler whistling away in the dead hours of the night. It means death, that whistle, don't it? And what happens? The anchor goes overboard. Captain Hawkins is bad hurt. And Barnaby yourself is almost killed. We'll all go the same way. The captain aboard that South America liner don't get us the whistler well. You're for taking the ship then, here and now. I am that. Let's take her, says I. Sail her off somewhere as we'll be safe. And then burn her. We'll leave no evidence we won't for the authorities to find us. This fellow, Clark Kent and Pete Barnaby, they'll try to stop us. Aye, that they will, but they won't get far. This will silence him in no time, it will. Glory beat is a carving knife he's got in his hand. Aye, a carving knife, lad. Straight from the galley and well sharpened. Now then, lad. You takes your choice. 
You stay here on this haunted ship and let the whistler kill you all in turn. Or you follow me, here and now. What will it be? It's my sisters who'll be following you, Amy. Uh, I forget me too. Uh, 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 come on, lad. We'll take the ship and sail it to freedom. Aye, and we'll slip the throat of him as we stand in our way. Uh, follow me, lad. Uh, well then, lad, you take your choice. You stay here on this haunted ship and let the whistler kill you all in turn. Or you follow me. What will it be? I'm with you. I'll follow you, Amy. I by golly, me too. Uh, uh, oh, then come on. We'll take this ship and sail it where we like. Follow me, lads. Follow me. Hold on, lads. Hold on. Quiet. Quiet. What's wrong, Amy? What's wrong, eh? What's wrong? There's what's wrong. Sitting on the edge of that there bunk is smoking this clay pipe. Eh? Oh. Scotty McTavish, eh? Aye, Scotty McTavish. Here we are getting ready to take over this here ship, and what's he doing? Sitting there and puffing away on this clay pipe. What's the meaning of it, Scotty? Come on, men. Speak up. I've made up my mind. I'll no join with you, Lamy. Ah. And why not, I'd like to know. I have no liking for mutiny, Lamy. It's a foolhardy business. Ah. So you don't like it, eh? Well, let me tell you something, Scotty. We're all in this together, see? With the exception of myself. Mind your own, Scotty. You're off your course. To the others of you that are off your course, not Scotty McTavish. Oh, so, uh, have you a match, Lamy? My pipe seems to be out. Never mind your pipe. What's more important is, what are you going to do about this here mutiny? Hey, up Have I not told you, Lamy? I'll no join with you. Ah, here's a match in my pocket. Now you listen to me, McTavish. They must don't come with us as a traitor, see? But there's only one way to take care of traitors. Right you, right Put up your knife, Lamy. It doesn't frighten me at all. Lads, lads, listen to an old seafaring man that knows what he's about. It's a risky thing, mutiny. And I've yet to see the crew that didn't wind up in irons before they were done. Very well, I'm well aware of what's going on aboard the Clara M. In the dark watches of the night, we've all of us heard the whistler piping his mysterious tunes. Some say it's a whistling sailorman come back from Davy Jones' locker to keep us company aboard. I may have. But I say, what of it? What of it? What of it, say Sam? I'll tell you what of it. We you the wish that's a sign of bad luck. Oh, and we've had bad luck, ain't we? First we run into a storm that batters us unmerciful. Then the captain is bad hurt. So bad hurt that the radio knows the ship to come and take him off. I uh, didn't ken what evil there is in asking help of a neighboring vessel. You didn't ken. Well, I'll tell you what evil there is in it. I've said before and I'll say again. We're all in the same boat. Every one of us is wanted by the authorities. What happens when that other ship goes alongside us, eh? One of the officers is bound to recognize some of us. Oh, and when he does, what happens? Investigation, that's what. Investigation. And after that, I and I am for every man jack of And your plan is to take the Clara M before the other ship arrives. Ah, uh, eh? take her and sail her off to some place where we can all be safe for the rest of our days. Very well. But have none of you thought of the captain. He must have magical attention, and he'll only get it aboard that other ship, the San Jose. Now, would you deny him that? That can't be helped. It's mother you'd be about. Without proper care by a doctor, Captain Hawkins won't live to see another day. Oh, lads, you mun hearken to me. There's a surgeon aboard the San Jose, and it's our duty to see that the captain's taken aboard her. Mutiny, take this ship and sail her away, and you'll be responsible for a life. If you're caught, you'll swing for it. We can't take the chance of being recognized, I'll say. We can't afford to let that other ship come alongside. The captain's life for ours. Now, it's like I say, lads, you takes your choice. What will it be? Come on, are you with me? I am. What about you, Scotty? I haven't changed my mind, Lamy. I'll just stay here, quiet like. Oh, you'll stay. And you'll be quiet, all right. Irish. Hey, sweet. Yeah. Gag him in time to his bunk. Right. Come on, Lamy. Uh, no need to get rough, lads. I'll no resist you. Careful of my pipe, Ken. All right, then. Put your arms around your back, Scotty. Have you no thought of what yeah. Barnaby will say to this? It's his money we've all taken and him we've promised to obey, you know. Uh, oh. Easy, lads, not to take on the ropes. Uh, don't worry, you're going on about take, Barnaby. We'll take care of him, too, if we have to. All right, you men, gag him. Oh, well, there's no need for that, I'm thinking, lady. He could be yelling his head off and there'll be nobody hearing him at all. No, you're right. He'll be safe enough for a time. All right, lads, follow me on deck. Right. Be quiet about it right. now. Right. Come on, along with you here. All right, up this companionway now. Come along. Quiet now, lads. Quiet. Keep it down. There, lady. Now it's done. Hey. Look there. His face streaks along the horizon. Hey, he's got to work hard. Hey. First thing to do is to settle with the elves. We've got to be sure of him. We do come along. You there at the wheel. Stephen. Lammy, what's the meaning of this man? 
What are you men doing up on deck with belaying pins in your hands? Shut your mouth and listen. We're talking the ship, that's all. Huh? Are you with us or aren't you? Well, now, I don't know. It needs a bit of thinking. There ain't no time for thinking. What's your answer? Speak up, speak up. Come on. But I tell you, Lanny, I got to think of... Oh, yeah. That's for him. Uh, that's the best argument I know is ever ballet and pen. <laughs> now, Swede. Yeah? Take the veil and change, change course. Yeah, Limey. The St. Joseph's coming in from the east, hard over to the west. I rest it is. All right, the rest of you follow me. All right. Hey, Limey, what's to be done now? The four people on this ship that'll be taken care of. There's the mate, Steve Barnaby. There's the reporter, Clark Kent, and the lad, Jimmy Olsen. And Captain Orkins, though. I doubt he'll be giving us any trouble, sick as he is. Now, I wish you'll take two men and go to the lad's cabin. Right, right. Bill, you'll take two more and take care of Mr. Kent. Okay. The rest of us will concentrate on Barnaby and see to the sail into the ship. Yeah, but uh, what's to be done with him? The same like we did with Scotty. Tie him up and gag him if necessary. Okay. We'll decide what's to be done with him after we're safe away from here. But you ain't to argue with him, see? One peep out of him and you'll use as your ballet and pins. Now, up to it. All of you up to it and do a good job all around. All right. While the mutinous crew, headed by Limey, proceeds to take over the ship, in the forecastle, Scotty McTavish struggles with the ropes that bind him, making a valiant but hopeless effort to escape. Oh, oh I should have found me well to have the wrists and ankles as tight, tight as tight can be. Oh, <coughs> can I undo these knots? But I must do something else. Oh, that's strange. Somebody knocking on the door. Uh, come in. Oh, I... Say, what's happened, Mr. McTavish? You... You're tied down to your bar. Uh, Where are all the men? Wish Jimmy Lad, there's time for talking later. But this very minute, untie these nuts and release me. Okay, I'll have you free in no time. What's happened, Mr. McTavish? Where are the rest of the men? Laddie, I... laddie, the questions you do ask. Oh, very well, then. I'll tell you. Lad, there's a mutiny afoot. A mutiny? Aye, aye. Most of the men with Limey leading them has decided to take over the Clara M. Golly. And heaven help us all, they'll do it, too, if we didn't have shot. Oh. But how come you to be here, lad? This very minute, Lamey and the crew are bent on taking you prisoner. I couldn't sleep. I thought I'd come down into the forecastle and have a talk with someone. You say the men are going to take everybody prisoner? All of them as won't follow them in their plan to mutiny. Mutiny? Aye. And that means Mr. Kent and Barnaby and yourself and Captain Hawkins. <laughs> there. Your hands are untied, Mr. McCaffrey. Good, laddie, good. Now put my feet. Come on, come on. Whatever we do, we'll have to work fast. Mr. Kent and Barnaby must have been captured already. Aye, and they'll be looking for you once they find out you're not in your cabin. What do we do, Mr. McTavish? I've been figuring on what to do, laddie, if I got myself free. And this is it. Yes? If they've captured the others, there's only two of us against the whole crew, do you see? Yeah. Now, what we'd best do is get to the radio room and send a message of distress to the San Jose. Tell them which way we're headed. But how can we send it, sir? I don't know Morse code, and they must have taken care of the radio operator. Aye, no doubt. But I know a little about Morse code, enough at any rate to manage. Uh, there, now, my legs is free. Oh, good. Let's get to the radio room as quick as we can. Right with you, sir. All right. Up the companion we hear, and soft, ready, soft. Mr. McTavish. Yes, sir. Uh, not only listen, laddie, but look as well. Uh, I've got Mr. Barnaby, and Stevens, the helmsman, and the radio operator. Oh. You see there? I've got them tied up and held it together. Yeah. The rest of them will be along with Mr. Kent any minute now. Can we get to the radio room without being seen? Well, we can try, laddie, we can try. We've got to cross that open space to the other companion. Just now, as he does it, we'll just wait till they're not looking this way. And... No, let me know. Come on. Oh, that was a close one. Oh. Now then, up this companionway to the radio room. Quick, laddie, quick. There's the radio room. Aye, and unguarded too. Oh, very confident these bears. Very. Now, now then. If I can remember how to start the sending apparatus. This switch here, Mr. McTavish. Hey, I believe that is the one. Throw it over and we'll see what happens. Quick, laddie, come on. Okay, here goes. Oh, hi, that's done it. She'll be warmed up any minute, and then we'll start sending our call of distress. The San Jose will probably be the first to answer. She must be closer than any other ship. Hi. Well, she, she must be warmed up by this time. Oh, let me think now. For the call of distress, I... I must try to get it straight in my head, though. Oh, you've got to, Mr. McTavish. Oh, wait. Wait. Now, well, if these old fingers of mine can still remember how to send it... Huh? You're doing it, Mr. McTavish. You're doing it fine. Aye, laddie. I am. Lay me. I'm a gun, McTavish, and I know how to use it. Huh? Take your hand off that radio key. Take it off. You're doing it, Mr. McTavish. You're doing it fine. Aye, laddie. I am. Lay me. I'm a gun, McTavish, and I know how to use it. Take your hand off that radio key. Take it off, I say. You're a dead man. So you must try to send a message to the San Jose, eh? Aye, trying, but not succeeding, I'm thinking. The better for you. For I swear, McTavish, the life of him, what stands in my way, is not worth tuppence. Now, you'll both come along with me. Where are you taking us, Lamy? On deck. We've Bonnaby and the radio man all tied up. 
Doctor. No doubt you're precious Mr. Kent as well by this time. Now, come on, get moving. Lay me. Lay me. I appeal to you again. You cannot do this thing, man. I'm a doing of it, ain't I? Oh, but the captain, lay me. Don't you know, man, the captain's a very sick man. Oh, you'd no kill the man by not letting him go aboard the San Jose. It can't be done and you know it. Now, listen, every man jack of this crew, even you, Scotty, is wanted by the maritime authorities for one reason or another. Some of us are stole. Some of us has committed murder. Gosh. And our pictures have been pasted up in every dock office throughout the world. What happens, I ask you, when the San Jose comes alongside, eh? We recognize that's what. Good an iron. We well, ain't going to be recognized, see? We're going to take this here ship and we're going to sail it to freedom, see? I see. And let me warn you. There now. Put this companionway to the deck. Come on. Play me, man. One request. Get along, you know. You'll no be hard on the lad, will you? It was me that made him come with me to the radio room, and it was me that forced him and to... that isn't so, Mr. McCann. No, Roddy, quiet. I'm grateful to you for trying to cover me, but, well, I can't let you do it. Well, I mean, I was just as anxious to send that message of distress as Mr. McTavish was. Oh? I don't care whether you know it or not. Slippy little beggar, ain't you? You'd like to run off at the mouth, don't you? Well, we may find a way of changing your mind, my lad. You'll sing a different tune before I'm done with you. Oh, looks like the entire crew is on deck, eh? I see Mr. Barnaby and the radio man, but... I didn't see our Mr. Kent. Huh? Blimey, that's peculiar. Irish! Huh? Where's Clark Kent? Well, Irish, I'm thinking the man's a leprechaun, Lamey. Uh, the will of the wisp, so to speak. Speak plain, speak plain. Really, he wasn't in his cabin, Lamey, and he's nowhere else to be found. Some of the lads are looking for him now. Mr. Kent escaped, Mr. McTavish. Mr. I, I, I heard that. Don't you think for one moment he's escaped us? He must be aboard the Clarion somewhere, and we'll find him, never fear. Uh, perhaps we will, but we've got to discover where he may be at. Not in this cabin, eh? Well, then, we'll just see. Come on, lads, follow me. Not in my cabin is right, Limey. I'm up here in the crow's nest, if you want to know, as Superman. Lucky for me, I'd gone to Captain Hawkins' cabin to see how he was getting on and was returning to my own cabin when I saw the beginning of this mutiny. Well, there's nothing to worry about now, Limey. Everyone's on deck, and off in the distance, I can see the smoke from the San Jose. She'll be alongside in an hour or two. Wait a minute. Changed our course, haven't we? Well, we'll just have to change back again. Instead of sailing away from the San Jose, Mr. Helmsman, I'll see to it that you sail this ship toward her. Down! Down! You there! You at the wheel! Oh, you been Yemeni, I've been seeing things. You won't be able to see anything if you don't do as I tell you. Hard over on that wheel, south by east, and quick about it. And look, mister, I don't know where you come from or who you are, but you don't give me orders. I'll show you that. No, and... I'll show you. Oh, 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 my arm, you must break it. Oh. Hard over on that wheel. Yeah, yeah, sure, like what you say. And keep her there. Oh, you think so, hey, mister? Well, me, I don't think so. The others, they see you now. Maybe you can twist my arm, but by golly, you cannot twist the arm of all them other fellows. Yes, <laughs> they've seen me, all right. And here they come with Limey at their head. Something tells me Superman will have to hand them a little surprise. What's coming off here? What's coming off? Hey, where you? Where'd you come from? It's Superman. Mr. Barnaby, McCavish, look. Now do you believe me? Why, the great hard fool, he looks like a Superman, but... Uh... Superman, is he? We'll see about that. You. You in that fancy costume. I've got a gun, see? Oh? Now get away from that man at the wheel or I'll let you have it. Fire away, Limey. Think I won't, eh? Well, I'll change your mind. <laughs> It's a oh, oh, bullet oh, oh. I've never seen nothing like it. Bulletproof vest, that's what he's wearing. Well, you won't last long with the lens get through with you. Come on, lads, jump him. Oh, and don't take a two inch limb while I'm All right, step up, gentlemen, step up. I'll take care of you. Oh, sorry, old man. Get over there. Oh, hit me with a belaying pin, would you? After all you've done is set the pin. No, 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 don't. Don't run off like that. Wait, here's something for you. Yeah. Come on, boys, don't hold back. Step up, one and all. Limey, Limey, why are you hanging in the background? Come on, Limey, let's have a little fun together. Stay Come away, on. Mate. Stay away from me, officer. And what good will your bullets do? I'll show you. Yeah, you see, Limey? Now I'll show you what I can oh. do without oh. bullets. Oh. Yeah, that finishes Limey. Now the rest of you men get below. Mr. Barnaby, right. this is your crew, or it was... Take charge here and try to do a better job of it. Aye, sir. And now, sir. I'm off. Superman, wait. Up, up, and away. He's gone. Aye, lad. But a good thing for us, he was nearby when this mutiny took place. So that's the fellow you call Superman, is it? You bet, Mr. Barnaby. Now do you believe me? Where'd he come from? Nobody knows. He just appears when someone's in trouble. Oh, I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own two eyes. Eh? 
And a lot of strange things have been happening on this ship. Well, this ain't the time to stand around wandering about it. Come on, Scotty. Help me get some of these men up on their feet. Nice, sir. Come on. Oh, well, Jimmy, lad, you'd better be tumbling off your bed. Oh, okay. But first, I've got to find Mr. Kent and tell him what happened. Good night, Mr. Barnaby. Good night, Scotty. Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night. An hour later, with the Clara M. once more peacefully riding a soft swell, and a lookout perched from the crow's nest watching the approaching steamer, the San Jose, Keith Barnaby limps down a companionway and pauses at the door of Clark Kent's cabin. Oh, hello, Barnaby. You wanted to see me, Mr. Kent? Yes, Barnaby, sit down. Uh, thank you, sir. I guess you want to talk to me about the mutiny that happened a few hours ago. Yes. Jimmy told me all about it. I understand that San Jose has been sighted and should be alongside in an hour to take off Captain Hawkins. I'm going to have her escort us into Caracas. Now, why would you be doing that, Mr. Kent? So that we'll be sure of reaching land safely. I can't take a chance with a rebellious crew, Barnaby. It's my intention, and I'm sure you'll agree with this, to have those men arrested. Well, now, Mr. Kent, ordinarily I'd agree with you. But uh, under the circumstances, I don't see how I can. What do you mean, under the circumstances? Well, for one thing, this wasn't actually no mutiny at all. The men were scared, Mr. Kent. Scared because they claimed they heard the whistler aboard ship. That's all it was. Whatever their reason, Barnaby, they attempted to take this ship, and that's mutiny. Aye, Mr. Kent, but, uh... Well, I'm a seafaring man, and you're not, and maybe I understand these things better than you. Now, this crew of ours, they're fine men, Mr. Kent, fine men. It's just that this whistler business, sir, uh, hearing that so-called spirit whistling in the night, uh, got on the nerves. I guess you say is how they didn't know what was going on for a time there. All they knew was they wanted to turn the ship for home and get back to land as quick as possible. Well, they still want to get back, don't they? No, sir, Mr. Kent, they don't. I've talked to them. I've taken the liberty of telling them that I'm their new master. I see. Now, all I'm asking is this. Keep on with this here around-the-world cruise. Forget the men ever tried to take the ship. I promise you, I'll keep them in hand from now on. I don't know, Barnaby. Now, believe me, sir, I know what I'm talking about. If the San Jose escorts us into Caracas, there'll be an investigation. You and young Jimmy and all the rest of us will spend the next six months in Caracas waiting for this case to come to trial. All because the lads was a little foolhardy. Well, all right, Barnaby. I'll do as you suggest. Uh, thank you, sir. I, uh, I'll be getting up on deck to make ready for the San Jose. Uh, she'll be coming alongside, soon. Right. I'm not the fool you think I am, Barnaby. You're after something yourself. I wonder what it is. Well, one way of finding out is to let you think you're having things your own way. When the right time comes, I can always... Fools! Every last one of you! And the biggest fool of all is Limey there. The man that persuaded you to mutiny. This man and myself is scared of what's going to happen, that's all. Every man jack of us is wanted by the authorities, you know that. What's going to happen when one of the officers on board the San Jose spots us, eh? You can all keep out of sight as much as possible. How can we keep out of sight? The time comes to transfer the old man in the stretch, eh? I can just see it in my mind's eye. A couple of the lads open to get the captain down into the motor launch they'll send over. One of the officers in that launch saying sudden like, Oh, for a moment, good fellow. Ain't I seen you somewhere before? Devil take me, I don't see you. You don't see. Well, I do. What happens after that is an investigation, that's what. An investigation of every man aboard this airship. There'll be no investigation where I'm master here. Yeah, that's what you say. You don't believe me, eh? No, I don't. Well, then, let me remind you of one thing. When I paid you men to sign on here, I promised you that no harm would come to you. And so far, I've kept me word. You know what Mr. Kent wanted to do with you men? He wanted to turn you over to the officers of the San Jose and have the Clara Emma's courted into Caracas. You all know what that would mean. An investigation, that's You and your investigation. It would mean prison. Prison for the rest of your natural lives. And maybe hanging for some of you. I tell you, we ain't going to expose ourselves by letting the officers aboard the San Jose spot us. I said I'd take care of that. That's what you say. I've got a job to do. And you've all been paid to help me do it. You'll take this ship when I give the word, and no sooner. Do I make my meaning clear? And don't forget it, neither. Now, as I was saying... Wait a minute. What is it? Quiet, quiet. Someone listening at the door. Keep talking. 
I'll throw this door open sudden like and we'll find out who it is. Well, Jim. Jim, lad. <laughs> Come to pay us a visit, did you? Why, yes, Mr. Barnaby. I, I thought I'd drop in for, for a talk. Right kind of you, lad. But why didn't you walk right in, lad? Afraid to break in on our conversation, were you? Why, no. That is, I just got here. I, I didn't even know you were talking to the men. Of course, there wouldn't be no reason why you shouldn't break in on us. Now, would that? No, sir, there wouldn't. Of course not. And, uh, <laughs> suppose you did overhear a word or two. There'd be no reason to go and uh, tell Mr. Kent. Now, with that. No, sir. There wouldn't. Uh, Irish, hey, sir. Uh, hand me that knife and that whetstone. Yeah, sure, then, Mr. Barnaby. Hand me knife. that knife, bless you. And that sharpness stone. What? what are you going to do, Mr. Barnaby? Just going to sharpen this knife, lad. <laughs> Look at that blade, lad. Nice and long and sharp. It'll be real sharp when I get done with it. Why? Why are you sharpening it? Always got to sharpen a knife before you use it, Jim. It uh, cuts cleaner. Does its work quicker. I'll be getting up on deck now. Now, now, don't go. Don't go. Not yet a while, lad. Stay and talk with me and the boy. That's what you've come down here for, didn't you? Yes, but I... That. Uh, she's nice and sharp. <laughs> Beautiful knife, ain't she? Just uh, feel the edge of it. No, oh, thanks. I... Well, I guess she's about ready to do the job I planned for her. So then... Mr. Barnaby, listen. I won't say anything about what I heard on my word of honor. I won't. I'll forget everything honest. Honest, I will. Ah, oh, now, lad. What's to get excited about? Had old Keith Barnaby said about sharpening a knife to whittle himself a new leg without you getting excited? Is, is that what you're going to use the knife for? Well, what else would I use it for, lad? I, I didn't know. My wooden leg uh, was bad splintered, you know. I'm just able to get around on it. It won't last much longer. Got to whittle myself a new one. Of course, sir. A knife can be put to other uses, too. For instance, I remember once when I sailed in a good ship, Sea Wolf, one of the crew uh, talked a little too much. And one morning they found... Huh? Well, that must be the San Jose. He arrived to take Captain off at last. Run along, lad, and tell Mr. Kent I'll be on deck in short order. And, uh, that's all you tell him. Understand? Aye, sir. Aye. Blimey. Irish, on deck. I'll be wanting you two to lower the captain oversight. We'll be spotted, that spot. And that's what you're open to. Keep your faces turned and no one will question you. Get going. Hey, Mr. Barnaby, the lad, do you think he'll talk about where you were held here? Have no fear. He'll do no talking. I'll see to that. Well, Senor Kent, the Capitan is safely aboard our launch, so we shall be leaving you. You are sure there is nothing further we can do for you? Oh, we're indebted to you as it is, Senor Alviro. Tell your captain for me how sorry we are to have given him this trouble. Oh, no trouble. The courtesy of the sea, Senor Kent. Uh, oh, oh, Senor Barnaby. Yeah, yeah, Senor. Uh, those two men of yours who assisted in putting your Capitan aboard the launch. One of them I seem to have seen somewhere. Uh, could I have a word with him, please? Well, I, Which uh, one do you mean, Senor Alvaro? Uh, that one there. Oh, Limey. Oh, well, Mr. Kent, Limey's got a good deal to do below deck. Oh, this I... will take but a moment, Mr. Barnaby. Is anything wrong, Senor Alvaro? Uh, Senor Kent, uh, it's just that, um... <laughs> no, no, I, I must be mistaken. Huh? I just thought for a moment, uh... Yes? Well, do not worry about it. I was wrong. And the quicker we get your capitan aboard the San Jose, the better. So I shall be off. Adios, Senor Kent. Goodbye. And again, thank you for all you've done. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Muchas gracias. Hey, he's all inside, Mr. Kent. We'll be getting underway. Very good, Captain Barnaby. Where's she? Where's she? Where's she? Where's she? Get on the main suit. Up to Jim. Oh, Jimmy. Yes, Mr. Kent. What's wrong with you? What's wrong? 
Why, nothing, sir. Oh, you can't fool me, Jim. There's something on your mind. During the entire time, Senor Alvaro from the San Jose was aboard, you kept in the background, sort of looking as if, well, as if you wanted to say something and didn't dare. Did I? Are you sure there's nothing wrong? No. Honestly, not a thing. Well, when you make up your mind to tell me what it is, let me know. But, Mr. Kent, I tell you... Jim, I know you too well to be fooled. You're worried about something. Something you feel you can't talk to me about. Well, if you don't want to tell me, well, that's all right. Just remember, though, that I'm ready to help you any time I can. Gosh, Mr. Kent, it isn't that I don't want to tell you, but... Well, then why don't you tell me? Well, we're on the way, Mr. Kent. Well, looks like you and the lad are having a little heart-to-heart talk. No, on the contrary, Barnaby. Jimmy here refuses to tell me what's on his mind. Something, uh... Worrying the lad? I'm afraid so. Well, maybe it's something he'd rather keep to himself. Hey, lad? What? Yes. Yes, Mr. Barnaby. Well, after all, Mr. Kent, a secret's a secret. Hey, lad? <laughs> oh, I, I didn't mean to pry. If I know Jimmy, he'll tell me what's on his mind in good time. Oh, he will, eh? Well, what do you say to that, lad? Oh, no. I mean... Well, lad, you're all messed up. <laughs> Here, now, we'll take your mind off your troubles. Let old Teague show you a new trick. Here, now, let's see. Uh, 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 there we are. A little matchbox. A little wooden matchbox. What are you giving it to me for? Well, you just take it over near the deck house there. Go along now, and I'll show you a trick. Okay, but I wish I knew what you're going to do. What are you going to do, Barnaby? Just a harmless little trick. All right, lad. Just hold the matchbox up now. Hey, okay. That's right. Now, then... Come on, be that nice. Uh, how's that, eh? <laughs> Clipped the matchbox out of the lad's hand and pinned it to the wall with me knife. Don't ever do that again, Barnaby. Uh, just a little trick, Mr. Kent. A harmless little trick. Trick or not, you might have hit Jimmy with that knife. Accidents happen. Not with old Teak Barnaby. I never hurt no one by accident yet. No, sir. Never yet hurt no one by accident. That on me for a squidgen-headed porpoise if I've ever seen a fog as thick as this on the floor. It went late to it. We'll not be coming out of this pea soup till dawn if we come out of it by then. It sure is thick. Gosh, I was after the helmsman when I heard the dinner bell ring, and when I came down the deck, I just managed to find the cabin. I just barely see the light shining on the wet deck. Well, however damp and cold and foggy it is out on deck there, it's comfortable enough in here. Judging by the way this meal is starting, that boy Sam certainly can cook. Yeah, he can, lad. Well, Barnaby, I'm glad you agree with me. Hey. Jimmy here hasn't touched a thing since he sat down. Oh, sure, lad, you're not feeling sickish. Not after being at sea a week. Oh, no, no. I'm just not hungry, that's all. Yeah, there's something wrong with you, Jimmy. Wish I knew what it was. It's nothing. Honest, Mr. Kent. Well, probably off his feet a mite, Mr. Kent. You mustn't trouble your head about him too much. Oh, I'm not worried, really. Except, well, Jim has always come to me when he's had a problem, when there's been anything on his mind. Yes, Mr. Kent, I've told you it's nothing. Well, frankly, Jim, I don't believe you. I know you as well as I know myself. You've got something on your mind. Something that's worrying you. And I know you'll come to me when you decide I ought to know about it. You will come to me, won't you? Well, sure, Mr. Kent, sure. Oh, gosh, can't we just forget about it for a while? You're upsetting the lad with these questions, Mr. Kent. He ain't got nothing on his mind. Nothing's worrying him. Why, have you, lad? Why, I... I... Why, of course not. Now, we'll just change the whole subject. I wonder how poor Captain Hawkins is getting along aboard the San Jose. You think he's got a chance to pull through, Mr. Kent? I think so. Well, if he does, he can thank you. And you can lay to that. Took a might of nerve to perform an operation the way you did, following the instructions wireless to you by the doctor of the San Jose. It there beats me, it does. Well, it had to be done, that's all. Yeah, but it sure took you to do it. Gosh, you, you're just like Superman in a lot of ways. Why, oh, Jimmy, this is too much. Comparing me to Superman, why, it's... Oh, okay, <laughs> go ahead and laugh. But you are like Superman. In some ways, that is. Lots of times I've seen you go right ahead and do something, well, dangerous, when you knew it had to be done. And that takes nerve. Uh, I'm afraid you overrate me, Jim. 
When it comes to nerve, well, we won't discuss it. Say, uh, by the way, I haven't mentioned this to you because I wasn't sure I ought to, but I don't think it'll be violating your confidence if I let you in on a confession Captain Hawkins made to me before he was taken aboard the San Jose. Like my timbers in confession, you say? Yes. You may recall that on the third day out, I discovered the helmsman was off his course. I remember it well. He was so far off his course, it couldn't have been no accident. No, and it wasn't. The helmsman was acting under orders from Captain Hawkins. You mean Captain Hawkins actually ordered him to steal the wrong course? Mm Mm-hmm. Why would he do a thing like that? For a very good reason. You see, Captain Hawkins had been master of this old clipper ship for over 30 years. I guess, Barnaby, you know what that means. I think the captain gets to feel a real love for his ship. Exactly. And that's the way Captain Hawkins felt about the Clara M. Yes. This, as you know, is the last cruise the Clara M will ever make. When we get back to Metropolis, the owner of my newspaper intends to make a floating museum out of it. Well, Captain Hawkins couldn't bear the thought of that. Gee, I I think I begin to see what you mean. Captain Hawkins intended to sail her off to some remote part of the world, maybe. Oh, am I right? You are, Jim. Captain Hawkins never intended to bring the Clara M back at all. He had a notion, oh, an impossible notion, I grant you, to keep on sailing the Clara M until the day he died. I'm only sorry his wish couldn't be realized. Yeah. It does kind of make you feel sad. Hey... Well, we can't let ourselves get down low in spirits. Yes, Keith, you're right. I'll tell you what. What, what in the name of the seven seas was that? It sounded like Sam, the cook. We better go see what's happened. Oh, there ain't no need for you to go, Mr. Kent, because I'm right here. And I'm staying here. I ain't never going back into that there gallery. Oh, stow it, stow it. What happened to you, cook? Yeah, okay. You look as if you'd seen a ghost. It sure does. Oh, I ain't seen no ghost, but I sure did hear one. What are you talking about, Sam? What do you mean you heard a ghost? Oh, just this very minute, sir. Right outside the window of the gallery, I... I heard the whistler. Whistler? Yes, sir, Mars Jim. It was a whistler, sure enough. Now, look here, Cook. All this business about the whistler is just seafaring superstition. Get back to the galley. But they say the whistler is a sailor what got himself washed overboard years ago, don't they, Captain? Aye, but... they say he come back to have the ship, don't they? Aye, boy. Well, then let me tell you, Captain, he's here right now. I hide him with my own ears. You can believe me or you can unbelieve me. I believe you, Sam. I've seen the whistler. Gosh, Mr. Kent, now's our chance to get him if we work fast. You're right, Jim. If the whistler does exist, he must be prowling around the Clara M right now. Come on. Well, where to, Mr. King? To the galley, Sam, and you're coming with us. Well, just so long as I've got company, all right. The galley's the best place to start, I'll be bound. There's the whistler right outside the window of the galley, did you? Yes, sir, Captain. I saw it in. We'll soon find out whether you did or not, Sam. Here's the galley now. And we're... Three day in the morning. What's the matter, Sam? Well, it's gone. Lord me, it's, it's gone. It's gone. gone, you woolly-headed porpoise. Well, the chicken I cooked for you and supper. It was sitting right there, piping hot. Yeah, well, evidently the whistler is more human than we think. He certainly is, if he can eat roast chicken. Hey, you're right. But we won't be doing no good just standing here. I'm going down to folks for rouse out the crew and have them go over the ship from step to stern. Wait. Huh? Or oh, what? Listen. What is it, Jim? I thought I heard... There it is. Mr. Kent, it's the whistler. You're right. Listen. Listen. That whistle came from up at the stand. Oh! Oh, oh, oh. Something's happened up there. Come on! This fog is so thick, it's hard to see two feet ahead. Yes, you're right. I've got some matches. What the hell? What in the world? Finally, Jimmy, help me. Finally, where are you? Finally. Oh, Oh, it's... It's, it's all right. It's all right. I, I fell over someone and I thought... Well, never mind what I thought. There's a man laying on the deck here. What? Strike a match. Man? Gosh. Here, wait a minute. Here, here you are. Look. Well, look. It, it, it's the helmsman. Yeah. He's out cold. Give me a hand here, Teak. We'll try to bring him around. Hey, we'll... Mr. Kent. Yes, Barnaby? Boy, that match, man, was burning your fingers, and you don't even feel it. What? Oh. Yes, sir. That flame was burning right between your fingers, and you never no, even... I wasn't thinking. I was too interested in the helmsman here. Oh, oh, oh. oh he's coming around. Hey. Oh. All right, lad. All right, now pull yourself together now. Come on, come, come on. on, wake up here. Oh. Where? Where is it? Where's who? The whistler. What? Oh, 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 my head. Did you see the whistler, too? I, I didn't know it was the whistler. Just saw someone sneaking along the deck. I could barely see him through the fog. Yes? I called out to him, but I got no answer. I left the wheel for a minute and ran after him, and 
Then sudden like, I heard a whistle almost right behind me. Yeah? Turned around. That's all I remember. Well, the whistle must have hit you with a belaying pin. Well, Mr. Kent, I guess there's no doubt in the whistlers aboard. We're sure of it this time. But he'll not escape us. You can lay to that. Elton, get back to your wheel. Yes, sir. I'll send a man to relieve you right away. Mr. Kent, I'll be going to the forecastle to rouse out the crew. Good. Jim and I'll keep on around the deck and find out what we can. It'll not be long. All right. Mr. Kent. Yes, Jim. I've got a flashlight in my cabin. I brought it with me when we came on board. Maybe I better go and get it, huh? It's a good idea, Jim. These matches of mine won't last long. I'll meet you at the forward companionway. Okay. I won't be long. I'll get right down to my cabin. All right, Jim. I won't bother to turn on the light here in the cabin. I know just where I put the flashlight. That's funny. It was right here in this top drawer. I'm sure I... What? Holy mackerel. What can that be? That's funny. The flashlight was right here in this top drawer. I'm sure I... What? Holy mackerel. Now what have I got into? Oh, gosh, what? What'll I do? I better light the oil lamp. Oh. There, that's better. Huh. No one in the cabin, but oh. still here. Oh, gosh. It sounds like a lost soul or something. Where's it coming from? It seems to be coming from that wall, from inside the wall. There's no door there or, or anything. Someone or something inside that wall. Whatever it is could get in, it can get out. Come out, whoever you are, come out. Come on out, I said. Hmm. The morning has stopped. Whatever was moaning must still be inside that wall. Maybe I better try a little trick. Come out or I'll shoot. You heard me. I've got a gun and I'll use it. Okay, you asked for it. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. What the... Oh, a mackerel, a kid. Say, who are you and how'd you get inside that wall? That sliding panel. Ain't you got eyes? I've been living inside there since this rotten ship left port. And I ain't no kid. I'm 14. Oh. Uh, What's the matter with you? What are you all doubled up like that? Can't for? you do nothing but ask questions? Can't you? No. Oh, I see. You're the one who stole the roast chicken. Uh. You're the whistler. Oh, my stomach. Uh, Gobbled the chicken up oh. too fast and got indigestion, didn't you? What's killing me? Can't you do something? Oh, maybe I can. Oh. There's a medicine chest in this cabin, and I think I saw some bicarbonate of soda. Wait a minute. Oh. oh. Yeah, Look. here it is, all right. What will it do? Kill your pain, I hope. Oh. oh. So you're the one that's been causing oh. us all the trouble. You're the whistling stove. Oh. Here, drink this down. What's it taste like? Never mind that. Drink it down. Every drop of it. Come on. No, okay, you don't got to rush me. Oh, that stuff tastes awful. Finish it. Give me a chance. Yeah, that's right. Oh. You'll feel better in a minute. What's your name? What's it to you? Now, look, fella, you're not going to get anywhere acting tough. I like the way I like. You've caused us enough trouble in the darkness and scaring the sailors out of their wits. Why did you do it? That's my business, pal. I think it'll be the captain's business, too. Mr. Kent. Come on. You're going up on deck with me. Oh, yeah? Maybe I ain't feeling so good. and Maybe I still got pains in my stomach. But I still got enough left in me to hand you one on the bazooka. I'm not going nowhere with you. That's what you think. Come on. Stay away from me or I'll let you... You'll what? Just this. Ow! Hey, let go. Let go, my little finger. What you doing? Ow! Just a little jujitsu trick. Oh! Mr. Kent taught me. Now, are you oh. going to come quietly or do I have to force you? I'll come quiet. Oh. Wise guy, huh? You see, I can't even stand up straight in the kind of I got a stomachache. You get tough. Makes you feel like a big shot, don't it? Stop whining and come on. We're going up on deck. Sure. We're going on deck. But we ain't going to get up. Oh, found that off your chin, big shot. You took me off guard. You... Hey, come back here. Go, jump it away. Come back here. You can't get away. You're bound to get caught. Come back here, I think. Take your hands off me, you. Not until you see Mr. Kent. He's on deck here somewhere. 
I'll be at the other end of the ship. Now, come on. Listen, you, maybe you think you're tough because you got me with that jiu-jitsu business once. I can handle five guys like you. Now, go on, say it. You can't get away, so you might just as well come along quiet. I had all I want out of you. Oh, I see that one coming in the fog. So you want to fight, eh? Yeah. All right, I'll see if I... Come back here. Okay, you little... Hey, let go of my ear, I'm you. I'm taking you to Mr. Kent if I have to take you on a stretcher. Say, you! You call that a punch? Try this one. Oh, not bad. How do you like that? There's more where that came from if you... Oh! Come on, come on, get up. And don't tell me you slipped. Hey, call me your balance, that's all. I'll get you for this. I'll bust you in half. I'll oh. put you... Take your hands off my throat. I'll take you... You're, you're bending me over the trail. You got it right, pal. You're going overboard. And you're going right now. Then you're going with me. That's what you think, you little... Let Taylor go. Uh, I can't save myself. It's Let go of me. We're falling. <laughs> Yeah, you. All right. Right here. Strike out for the ship. He's moving away from his fast. I can't. I, I, I can't swim. I can't swim. <laughs> Holy mackerel. <coughs> oh, it's all right now. I got you. Just take it easy. Oh, I'm going to drown. We're not going to drown. Shut up. Stop talking. We're going under. <laughs> Maybe that'll teach you to keep your mouth closed. Oh, uh, hold on to me. Put your hands on my shoulders. I'm going to try to make the ship. Hold on. Our only chance, kids. Hold on. Oi. That you, Mr. Kent? Yes, Barnaby. Well, I browse them in over the forecastle. They're searching the ship for the whistler again, and they'll find him this time. You may later that. What were you doing just standing here? Why, I told Jimmy I'd meet him here at the forward companionway. He went down to his cabin to get a flashlight. Uh, flashlight won't do much good in this fog. Uh, it's getting thicker. Yeah, it's better than matches. Mayhap. Didn't see no sign of the whistler, eh? No, not a sign of him. I can't imagine what's behind all this, Barnaby. No more can I. But we'll find out when we lay our hands on him. And that won't be long from now, I'm thinking. A yeah, good thing, too. You mean the crew? Aye. The whistler was the reason behind that mutiny we had a couple of days ago. The men are scared, Mr. Kent. They're calling the Clara M a haunted ship. If we can lay our hands on the whistler, why, we can prove to... Wait a minute. Her... What? Shh, quiet. But I heard someone running along the deck up forward. Huh? I didn't hear nothing. Fog is a peculiar thing, you know. Sometimes make you think you hear things. Wait, don't you hear? I can't be sure, but it sounds like voices. <laughs> You're keen hearing if you can hear voices in this fog, Mr. Kent. I can't hear a thing. Well, all the same, we'd better get up forward. Come on. Yeah, right through here. Sounds as if there's a fight going on. Hard to tell, really. Uh, fog. You can't believe your ears in the fog are later there. Well, I want to... Wait. Now what? Barnaby, I may be hearing things, but if that wasn't a splash, as if someone had fallen overboard... Come on. See anything up over there? No, not a thing. But if someone fell overboard, why... Well, ah, who'd be falling overboard, Mr. Kent? What I mean is, if someone, one of your men, had caught up with a whistler and there'd been a fight... Brave your chance, Mr. Kent, you're imagining things. No one knows a fog like an old sailor such as myself. And I'm telling you, he's been playing tricks with your ears. Well, I dare say you're right. We'd best keep looking for the whistler. You come along, sir. The men may have found it by this time... Hey, what are you looking all through the fog for? Nothing, only I, I, I've got a feeling that... Oh, never mind. Probably just imagining things, as you said. Come on, Barnaby. Let's keep looking for the whistler. <laughs> We're making... You ain't getting nowhere. Just, just keep your head. We'll make it all right. We will, huh? With those riding lights in the car, I am. <coughs> they get further and further away all the time. 
Look. The fog's closing in around you. Take it easy. Be quiet. I won't. Look, we can't see the lights no more. You'll never get to the ship now. We're going to drown. That's what. We're going to drown. Help. Help, we're drowning. You stop telling me. How do you expect me to swim if you... Stop it. Oh, we'll both go under. We're going to go under anyway. You're done for. Done for. You can't swim for the both of us. We'll never reach the ship. It, it's gone. We can't catch up to it. Stop, stop it. <laughs> stop struggling. You're making this a lot harder. <laughs> Out your, your arms. You're strangling. I guess this is the only way. Oh. <laughs> now you'll be quiet. There. Up on your back. And under your chin. And now, how to try and make the boat. Strange, Barnaby. Very strange. I was so sure I heard a cry for help coming to us out of the fog. Well, fog's a peculiar something, Mr. Kent. Makes you hear things that ain't there. Now come away from that rail and stop staring off into the soup. There's nothing you heard but your imagination. Uh, Jimmy ought to be on deck by this time. He went below to get a flashlight. You better get up toward the forward companionway. I said I'd meet him there. Well, there's a forward companionway just ahead, Mr. Kent. You can just make out the light from the doorway shining yellow in the fog. Yes. Fog seems to be getting worse, Barnaby. Can't see a hand two feet in front of you. Eh? I've sailed the seas a lifetime, Mr. Kent. And I've yet to see it thicker than this. Fit to slice it in. Well, here's the forward companionway and no sign of the line. No. Uh, Barnaby, you go on with the search for the whistler. I'm going down to Jimmy's cabin. Thank you, all, Mr. Kent. We'll run into each other again somewhere around the deck. All right. See you later. Now, here's Jimmy's room. Huh. Door's open and the oil lamp is lit. Jimmy's not here. Oh, funny he wasn't... Wait a minute, what's this? Chair knocked over. Package of bicarbonate of soda spilled all over the floor. Hello, what in the world? Why, there's another room next to Jimmy's. More a closet than a room. A sliding panel. What's this lying on the floor? Something wrapped in a large piece of oiled silk. No time to examine it. Something's happened to Jimmy, I'm sure of it now. And that cry for help coming through the fog astern of the Clara M. Of course. This is a job for Superman. Got to get on deck. I've got to get there fast. Now then, Jimmy's out there somewhere. He either fell or was thrown overboard. That was his cry for help, I heard. Well, fog or no fog, I'll find him. Up! Up! And away! Stella's heavy. She's coming, too. Take it easy. Stay on your back in the water. I've got my hand under your chin. You can't sink so long as I keep it You're trying to save me. Trying to save us both. You'll never make it. Not with me, you won't. Just let me go. Shut up. I ain't afraid. Honest, I ain't. It'll be over quick. Shut up. I can't swim. Oh, going down. I... Oh. Wait. Why oh, you won't cut? Oh, my arms getting tired. Can hardly lift them. I'm going under. Going under. Even with my eyes, it's hard to pierce this fog. Don't see a thing on the water. Not a sign of Jimmy. Well, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I only thought I heard that cry for help. And Jimmy's safe aboard the Clara M. Well, yeah. there's the foghorn of the Clara M. Must be all of a mile from here. If Jim had fallen or was pushed overboard, he wouldn't be any further away than this. Well, I haven't spotted him, so I must be wrong. Better return to the ship. 
I'll swing around. Wait. There, below. Thought I saw two heads bobbing on the surface. Two. Wait, there they are again. Two people, and they're fighting. They're going under. Got to dive for them. Down. Down. Dark down here under the water. Almost pitch dark. Wait, there they are. Sinking. Still locked in each other's arms. I got him. Now, up. Up to the surface. And fast. Up. Leaving from the fog-bound water, Superman speeds toward the Clara M, carrying the unconscious forms of Jimmy and the unknown stowaway in his arms. Meanwhile, the ship's crew, after a fruitless search for the whistler, gather in the forecastle. It's like I've always said, the whistler is a phantom, a will of the wish. Oh, hey, good luck, man, that superstitious duck. Just because you can't find the whistler, doesn't he mean to say he's a spirit? Yeah, what do you know about it? We've been over this tub looking for the whistler two times and we ain't never seen him. Ain't that proof enough that he don't exist in flesh and blood? What do you say, Limey? I'm not saying a word, not a blooming word, I ain't. I've had my say. And what happened? Just when I bid you all the victory, when we could have taken this here ship and sailed to where we please, you all turned tail and joined up with Barnaby again. Uh, sure, I believe the whistler's a spirit, but I ain't saying a word about it, not one blooming word. Well, says myself that says let's go to Barnaby and demand to be set ashore at the nearest port. And if Barnaby refuses us... All right, Mr. Kent. Bring him in here. Oh, the saints in heaven. It's the captain himself carrying a lad in his arm. Hey, and with Mr. Kent behind him, a carrying young Jimmy. Hey, good lush one up here. So they ain't drowned are they? Oh, still breathing, both of them. Oh, cool. Mr. Kent and me found them on deck. So how they got there is beyond me. Also was nearer, so we brought him here. Hey, clear them bunch off. Oi, oi, lend a hand. Come on. Must have fell overside, both of them. Hey, but if they fell overside, how did they get on board again? And who's the other lad? I don't know. Can't understand it. There's been a lot of things happening around here I can't understand. Jimmy's coming around. Finally, you better work over that other boy. Hey, lay you here, lad. Let's get the key out of his stomach. Oh. All right, Jimmy. Easy does it. Mr. King. What? What? The other boy. The fellow with me. Oh, he's all right, too. Nothing to worry about. But... But how do we get here? No, huh? no, no. We'll talk about that later. Right now, you've got to rest. Oh, then, me buckle. Oh, no, in there. Oh. Better, that, better. Walks and wails. He sure swallowed enough water. Where am I? All, all right, son. Now, draw some breath. Hey, I'm alive, ain't I? I, I didn't drown. You come close to it, and you can lay that. Now, what were you doing oh. aboard the Clara Air? Now, let me handle this, Barnaby. Son, what's your name? Mike. Mike Flanagan. But all the guys call me Pug. Hey, where's me pal? Hey, the guy would save me. Whatever he is. She thanks a million, pal. If not, Now, wait a minute, get... Pug. Wait what? a minute. How did you get on board the Clara M? Oh, I stole away. I've been hiding in that secret closet in me pal's cabin. Jimmy's cabin? Yeah. Is that his name? Hiya, Jim. Hiya, Pug. How did you find the secret closet? Well, I got into the cabin before anybody came aboard. I leaned against the wall in my hand and to see a secret panel slid back. Secret panel? Wolves and whales. And you've stowed away ever since? Yeah. And nobody would have found me. Only tonight I chopped the chicken from the galley. I guess I ate it too fast. I hadn't had nothing to eat in a long time but Jimmy Tramps. Jimmy here heard me moaning. Yeah, but never mind all this. He saved my life. Where is he? Let me go to him, huh? Take it easy, fella. I'm okay. Yeah, but... You saved me life. Even after I try to knock you off. Oh, go on. You wouldn't have... Yes, I would. I'm like that. Anything, anybody gets in the way, uh, I... this chicken you stole from the galley, how did you manage it? I whistled outside the galley and scared the cook. He ran out of the galley to get help, and I went in and took the chicken. Do you mean to say, lady, yeah. that you I've been making believe I'm the whistler. I heard you guys talking about him, so I made out I was him. But just to get food, see, I didn't mean nothing by it. Except one night, Jimmy came after me. Followed me up the rigging. And I had a jump in his hand till he fell. Yeah, but there's something funny I got to... Now, you're told happened. enough. You're told enough. Well, men, you see where your superstition has gotten you all? Here's your phantom whistle for you. A stowaway. Now, maybe you'll realize what fool you've all been. Well, tis me, myself, that's saying I was in the wrong. And I reckon the whole crew will join me in them... <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you men have regained your senses. 
Now, perhaps we can continue our cruise around the world in peace. Yeah, but listen, there's something you got to know. That's enough for that mm-hmm. later, lad. Right now, you need rest. Yeah, but you don't understand about the whistler. Well, what about the whistler? Well, I'm not the whistler. It's not the real one. All anyway. right, lad. All right, now. Just take but it I easy. But I tell you, I'm not. I just made believe I was when I needed food. But there is a whistler. A real one. On board this ship. I know. I heard him myself. What do you mean, you heard him? You're not the real whistler at all. What do you mean, you're not the real whistler? Well, I was just... That's what I mean. Holy mackerel. There's another whistler. No, sir. That's... Whistler. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Something's wrong here. Ain't this kid just after saying he was the one that done the whistling? I said I was just making believe I was the whistler. The first night out, I heard him. And I've been imitating him ever since. And the whistling we've heard was sometimes you and sometimes the real whistler. Is that it? You got it. Now, this being the case, it's like our state. This here ship is altered. Altered by the whistling signal. Men, what was lost over bold years, I guess. Hey, lay that bill, Glimey. I'd not have you stirring up the crew like you did before. Not why Chief Barnaby's master of the ship. And it's true, ain't it? There ain't nobody on deck right this here minute but the helmsman. And you ain't telling me he was the one what just whistled you, ain't Another word out of you, Lamy. And by the great horn phone, I... Wait. Listen. Now, wait a minute. There's only one thing to do. Come on, let's get up on deck. Hey, hop to it, lads. On deck, every man jack of you. What's wrong? Why do you stare at me like that? We ain't going on deck, Barnaby. Captain Barnaby, you squidgin' headed porpoise. All right. We ain't going on deck, Captain Barnaby. No, you're not. Scared, are you? Well, by the seven seas, you'll do as I say, or... Oh, what the... It's the helmsman. What in the name of... What's the meaning of this, sailor? Well, Who told you to leave the wheel? Uh, I'm not staying up there, see? I had enough. I, I, I heard that thing again. It's coming at me through the fog. Light uh, my uh, eyes. Scotty. Aye, sir? To the wheel. And quick, man. Aye, sir. Uh, that's the way of it. A ghostly whistle. Floating out of the fog. I can still feel the chills creeping up me. Hey, listen to talk. Uh, Are you men listen to me? Uh, no, uh, listen to me, I said. I've sailed the sea for many a year. I've been master of my own ship. And master's mate of many another. But wherever I've been, I've been obeyed. Now hear me. You're going up on deck, every man jack of you. And him that second he won't follow that order, let him step forward now. Cheapers, mister, can't look. They're all stepping forward. Uh, you asked him. Looks as if we may have to do something about this. So, you're all in this together, are you? You're all disobeying me. Well, then, there's only one thing to do. Look, Mr. Ken. He's taking off his jacket and rolling up his sleeves. All right now, my hearties. Take Barnaby's ready. For the last time, I'm telling you to get on deck. Move! And move smart! Or I'll break each one of you in two. Oh, you will, will you? Now, come on, lad. We'll show him. Jump him, I say, then jump him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, you men. Wait a minute. There's no need for them to go on deck, Barnaby. What's that, Mr. Kent? You can't blame them for being afraid. Instead of having a fight here, which wouldn't get us anywhere, I suggest that those of us who aren't afraid... Go on deck and try to find the meaning of that whistling. Now you're talking. I've always wanted to find out where that whistling come from myself. Stow your talk, me bucko. And bear in mind you're a stowaway. I've given an order here, Mr. Kent, and well, I... better did... withdraw it, Barnaby. The only way to get these men over their fear is to find out what's the cause of that whistling. Now, those of us with any sense know it isn't a spirit. Oh, it's ain't, eh? The news doing that there whistling. Well, I don't know, but we're going to find out. All right, now... Who's coming on deck with me? Well, you can count on me, Mr. Kent. Me too. Lead the uh, way, buddy. I've been cooped up in that there secret closet so long. I'm just aching to stretch me muscles on some palooka what thinks he's a ghost. There's the whistler again. All right. Let's get up on deck quickly. Come on. Hey, 
Now, let's see. Well, one good thing. The fog's cleared. There's a bit of a breeze coming up. Yes, you're right. I... I don't hear the whistler anymore. Barnaby. Okay. I think this is what we'd better do. Okay. You and our young stowaway friend Pug here go aft. And Jimmy and I'll go forward. And that way, we'll cover the entire deck. Hey, good idea. Boy, I'm just thinking to get me hands in this thing or whatever it is that's doing all the whistling. I imitated it all right. But I'm telling you, there was times when I could feel me hands standing ah, on it. Pipe head. down, pipe down. I ain't forgetting your stowaway, me fine fella. So we'll be taking care of you. All right, Jim. You and I'll go forward. Okay. Gosh, I sure wish we were back on land, Mr. Kent. What do you mean, Jim? I don't know. This cruise, it, well, it isn't anything like I thought it was going to be. We've had nothing but trouble since we started. There are things going on that I... Yes? Things going on that what? I... Nothing. I didn't exactly mean that. And what did you mean exactly? Nothing, Mr. Kent, honest. Now, look, before we get anything else settled, Jim, suppose we settle this. Settle what? You've had something on your mind for several days now. Something that's been bothering you. Why you haven't told me about it, why you've kept it to yourself, I don't know. But I do think it's about time you opened up. I... I can't, Mr. Kent. I... I don't like to do this, Jim, but for your own good, I've got to insist that you tell me. And you needn't be afraid of Barnaby. Barnaby? How did you know he had anything to do with it? I've got eyes, Jim. You think I've seen the way he looks at you? Don't you think I've realized that he's been trying to keep you from telling me something? Gosh, Mr. Kent, Take that knife episode the other day. When Barnaby said he was going to show you a trick. He made you hold a matchbox in the air and then pin that matchbox to the deck house by throwing a knife at it. Yeah, that was pretty good, huh? That was done to scare you, Jim, and don't think it fooled me for a second. The reason you haven't told me what's on your mind is that you're afraid of Barnaby. Well, you don't have to be afraid anymore. Now, what is it? I haven't been afraid for myself, Mr. Kent. I was afraid for you. But if I told you, you'd start something with Barnaby and... Oh, he's a pretty tough customer. I've met tough customers before, Jimmy. And anyway, didn't you tell me yesterday that in a lot of ways I was like Superman? Yes, but... Barnaby is dangerous. He wouldn't stop at anything. Now, don't you worry about that, Jim. Now, tell me. What's on your mind? What have you been holding back? Okay, I'll tell you. The other night I was going down into the forecastle to see Scotty. When I got to the door, I heard voices inside. Barnaby was talking to the men. Go on. He was telling them they were fools to mutiny when they did. He said the time wasn't right. That's very interesting. What else did he say? Well, he said he... Gosh, Mr. Kent, you won't start anything with Barnaby, will you? You know me better than that, Jim. Go on. Well, he said he had paid the men out of his own pocket to sign on board this ship, and he expected them to do as he told them. Oh, that's why this crew signed on with Barnaby after dozens of other sailors had refused to sail on the Clara M. That's eh? right. Because Barnaby was paying him out of his own pocket. Uh huh. Well, then he went on to say that he'd let him know when the right time came to take the ship. He said he hadn't found what he was looking for yet. When he did find it, then they'd take the ship. I knew Barnaby had a reason for signing on. What's he after? Do you know, Mr. Kent? No, Jim. I've got a feeling we'll find out before long. If things turn out as. I... Whistler again. Mr. Kent, he, he's up ahead there in the bow. Yes. Come on and walk quietly. This time we're not going to be fooled. Oh, don't move so fast. It's and foggy. It's hard to see. Here, take my hand, Jim. That's it. overboard. The ship's too narrow at this point for anything to get past us. Gosh, my heart's pounding like a trip hammer. Maybe you'd better stay here, Jim, while I move up on him. No, no, I'd rather go with you. Well, okay. When the battle starts, let me handle it. All set? I... I guess so. 
All right, then. Quiet. Now. This time, Jim, the whistler can't get away from us unless he jumps overboard. The ship's too narrow at this point for anything to get past us. Gosh, my heart's pounding like a trip hammer. When the battle starts, let me handle it. Are you all set? Uh, I guess so. All right, then. Quiet. Now. Gosh, Mr. Kent. He can't be more than five or six feet ahead of us. Yes. Hmm. Fog seems to have thickened again. Hard to see through it. But come on. Easy now, Jim. If anything's going to happen, it'll happen in the next few seconds. Don't, don't worry about me. Gosh, that whistle is... The... What is it? Jim, we... We can't go another step. We're right up in the very tip of the bow. I can almost reach out and touch the figurehead. Yes, there's... Nothing here. That's right. Not a sign of anyone. I don't suppose... Oh, gosh, Mr. Kane. Now, take it easy, Jim. Take it easy. This business about it being a spirit is seafaring nonsense. There's some explanation for this strange thing, and we've got to find out what it is. Maybe it isn't the spirit. But with this fog swirling around us and the whistler disappearing right in front of us... Well, we didn't actually see him, Jim. No, but we heard him. There it is again. Right on top of us, Mr. Kent. Easy does it. Jim, that whistle came from right in front of me. There's nothing there. Nothing but the figurehead. That wooden carving of a woman with her hair flying in the wind. Exactly, Jim. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's the matter, Mr. Kent? I'm not sure, but... Jim, you stay here while I work my way out onto that figurehead. Gosh, be careful, Mr. Kent. If you ever fell over... Don't right? worry. I won't. There it is again. Yes, and this time I'm closer to it. Yes, sir, we're on the right track now, Jim. Mr. Kent... Have you found anything? Mr. Kent? Mr. Kent? Oh, my gosh. It's all right, Jim. Oh. I didn't want to answer you before I heard the whistle again. I was right. The mystery is solved. Oh, good night. What is it? Where did I get back on deck? Huh? Well, what was it, Mr. Kent? What did you find? Jim, you'd never believe it. But there's a set of wooden pipes, like the pipes on an organ set into that figurehead. Wooden pipes? Exactly. Very cleverly set into the figurehead, so that when the wind blows in a certain direction, it plays that little tune on the pipes. Well, I'll be... Hey, listen. You know, it sounds kind of pleasant, <laughs> now that I know what it is. Of course it does. Whoever had those pipes built into the ship or why, I'm afraid we'll never know. But there's no question about it, that's how the legend of the Whistler started. Oh, you could knock me over with a feather. <laughs> and all the time we thought it was a, well, a spirit. Yes. And our stowaway friend, Pug Flanagan, made very good use of it, too. Hey, which reminds me, we better look for Barnaby and Pug and tell them what we've discovered. Yeah. They ought to be coming up on the other side of the deck by this time. Boy, will they be surprised. Yeah. Not to mention the crew. They'll certainly be glad to know the truth about the whistler. Yeah, but still, that... that doesn't solve our other problem, does it, Jim? Oh, you mean about Barnaby planning to take the ship by force? Yeah. Say, uh, when we come up with Barnaby and Pug, don't let on that you've told me anything. We know he's looking for something aboard the Clara M, Jim, but... Well, we can't show our hand until we discover exactly what it is he wants. Oh, whatever it is, it sure must be valuable. Don't forget, he bribed the crew with money out of his own pocket to sign on board the Clara M. It must have cost plenty. Yeah, you're right. 
Yes, whatever Barnaby's after must have great value. It's all the more reason for us to keep quiet until we find out what it is. I guess you're right. All I can say is... Wait. What's that? Sounds like Barnaby up ahead. He must be talking to Pug. Boy, wait till they hear. Wait a minute, Jim. Huh? Listen. What's that Barnaby saying? What? Quiet, listen. Wanted to know me to light or by heaven, I'll lash you within an inch of your life. I tell you, I don't know nothing, see nothing. Now let me go. You start away in that secret compartment for a week, didn't you? Yes, sure. Gee, Mister Kent, what? Quiet, Jim. Let's hear this. Yes. You mean to say there wasn't nothing in that secret compartment? Nothing at all. That's what I said. And if you don't like it, you can love it. Yeah. Hey, 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 you're breaking my arm. Well, that's just the beginning. You see this? Oh. A knife, huh? Okay, what do you want? Mr. Kent, don't you think we Don't better... worry, don't worry, Jim. You wouldn't dare hurt him. Well, He's either you cat. tell me what was in that secret compartment next to Jimmy Olsen's cabin, or you start saying your prayers if you know any. I'm telling you, there wasn't nothing in that closet. Nothing except... Well, yeah, there was something. Ah, I thought you'd be singing a different tune before long. What was that? Just an old piece of oil silk. I used it to wrap up any food I wanted to save. And that's all, to help me. There wasn't nothing else in the closet. That's all, you say? Yes. <laughs> that's enough. Where's that piece of oil silk now? I don't know. I... Hey, wait a minute. I remember now. That reporter guy, Clark Kent's got it. Kent's got it, eh? Yes. Well, we'll just have to... Have you got it, Mr. Kent? Why, uh, yes, Jim. It's right here in my coat pocket. The way Barnaby's talking, it sounds pretty important. Yeah, it sounds very important, Jim. Come on. Well, are we going to talk to Barnaby and tell him about the whistler? Oh, no, that can wait. Right now, we're going down to the privacy of my cabin. But what for? Why do you... To find out, Jim, just how important this piece of oil silk really is. Come along. Light the oil lamp, Mr. Ken. All right, Jim. There we are. Good. All right, now suppose you pull a chair up to the table here. Mm-hmm. Right, you all set? Now then, we'll just open this oil silk. Gee. Well, for the. a piece of roast chicken. Pug must have been saving it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not interested in what's inside this silk, Jim, but what's on it? Oh, what could be on it? I don't know. That's what I want to find out. Yeah, it's pretty dirty. Must have been on the floor of that secret compartment for years. Hey, Jim. Yeah? Uh, take that towel and dip it in that basin of water and bring it here to the table, will you? Uh, better bring basin and all. You gonna try and wash the dirt off? Yep. We'll have to be careful, too. You don't want to wash off whatever else may be on the silk. What, what do you think could be on it? Well, that's hard to say, Jim. But whatever it is, Barnaby's anxious to get his hands on it. Here's the wet cloth. Oh, good. Now, well, let's just see if we can get this dirt off. That oil silk is pretty much all dried out. Mm. It's a piece of old parchment. Yes, and the dust has worked itself into the fibers. If we're careful enough, we may be able to... Make something out of this. Oh, gosh. Oh, I rubbed too hard. The silk tore. Oh, gee, be careful. Do you think there's really anything written on that silk? Hmm. Gosh. Here, dip this cloth in the water again, will you? Don't you see anything there? No, not yet, no. The dirt's coming off easier than I thought. Here's the cloth. Thanks. Now then. Here. Here. Anything yet? Yes. Yeah, Something here. Can you tell what it is? No, not yet, Jim. Don't get excited. But gosh, it, it might be anything. It might be a treasure map or something written by some old pirate. Wait. Or... I'm getting it now. Oh, gosh, let me look. Let me look. There. We just wipe this part off here and... Oh, what is it? Oh, I'll be... What is it, Mr. Kent? Jim, it's the most amazing... Oh, dear. <laughs> There, now, as soon as I wash the dirt off this part of the oil silk. Well, what is it? Well, I'll be... What is it, Mr. Kent? Jim, it's amazing. Excited, I... It looks like a map. It is a map, Jim. A treasure map. Gee, Willikins, are you sure? Well, pretty sure. Look, 
Outline here, just follow my finger now. Yeah. Is the east coast of Africa. Uh-huh. And right here is the Red Sea separating Africa from Arabia. This is the Indian Ocean. Gee, Africa and Arabia. Red Sea and the Indian Ocean. <laughs> Take it easy, Jim. Take it easy. How can I? A real treasure map. Boy, oh boy. No, we're not absolutely positive it's a treasure map. Not yet at any rate. Well, let's see. Here's an arrow. You can just barely make it out. It's faded so badly. Yeah. Points to a bit of land just south of Sumatra. Sumatra? Uh-huh. Oh, golly. There's some markings. Let's see if we can decipher them. Fifteen degrees south latitude. Yes. By one oh three degrees, twenty minutes west longitude. Uh-huh. And locate the piece of land. I have to look at a chart to get that exact location, but it's certain, Jim, this piece of land is an island just south of Sumatra. Sumatra? That's right near Borneo, isn't it? In Java. Yes, Jim, the Dutch East Indies. Oh, gosh, Mr. Kent, this is so exciting. I, I... Oh, God. For heaven's sake, Jim, relax. It may be nothing at all. Oh, you said yourself it might be a treasure map. Yes, I know, but then again, it might not be. But I don't get excited until we're sure. Oh, but it must be a treasure map. All these strange markings on it, and Barnaby being so anxious to get his hands on it. Yes, yes, but you never know. Wait a minute, here's something on the other side. Oh, what's it say? This is the... Yeah, yeah. ...the map of Samuel Saul. Oh, gee, Willick, is Mr. Ken. Mm. Read it out loud. All right, Jim. Here's what it says. Legend. Legend? Gee, that, that's sort of old-fashioned, isn't it? Now, let me read this, will you? Stop interrupting. Oh, okay, I won't say another word. Okay. Now then, legend... Yeah, Mr. Kent? This is the map which locates the exact spot... Yeah? ...where I, Samuel Salt, master of the Clara M... Clara M? ...master of the Clara M, have hidden the booty and the treasure... Gee. ...gathered together by me during years of... Pirating on the Spanish main. Spanish main? Pirating? Oh, gosh, Mr. Kent. Wait a minute, Jim. That's not all. This map will locate the island on which the treasure is hidden. Signed, Samuel Salt, Master of the Clara M., June 18th, 1887. Wowee! The treasure map, all right, Jim? Oh, it sure is. Boy, I never thought anything like this would ever happen to me. Yeah, it is exciting, isn't it? But Jim, now bear in mind that this map doesn't give us much to go on. All it does is locate the island where the treasure is buried. Oh, gosh, what more do you need? Well, it may be a pretty big island, Jim. And if it is a big island, it might be impossible to find the treasure. Oh, I don't say that, Mr. Kent. Gee, listen, if we're going around the world, there's no reason why we couldn't go by way of the Indian Ocean, is there? Well... And there's no reason why we couldn't find that island and have a try at locating the treasure, is there? I don't know, Jim. It's something to think about. Don't think too hard on it, matey. What? Oh, hello, Barnaby. Oh, Mr. Barnaby. Where's Pug Flanagan? He was with you, wasn't he? Send him below to Postal. And I wouldn't worry none about him if I was you, Mr. Kent. There's more important matters to talk over, as you might say. More important matters? Such as what? To put it blunt, such as that map there on the table. Gosh. Oh, you've been eavesdropping, Barnaby, huh? I heard something of what you were saying before I barged in. Oh, well, good. In that case, I won't have to explain what this is all about. Explain to me? To me, Chief Barnaby? I could tell you more about that fair map than you learned in a week of Sundays. Oh, you could. Hey, I ain't one for mincing words, Mr. Kent. So I'll come right down to the point. I want that map. Well? There's something in your face, Barnaby, and something in your tone that tells me you plan to get this map regardless of what might stand in your way. Right you are. Well, you're not going to get it. Gosh, Mr. Kent. You're sailing the wrong course, matey. Before we go any further, I got a few things to say. Go right ahead. Jimmy and I are listening with bated breath. Before this here ship, the Clara M, cleared from Metropolis, I went to see a man named White, editor of that there newspaper you're a reporter on. I told him I wanted to buy the Clara M, and I was willing to spend good money to buy the ship. You, you wanted to buy the Clara M? Hey, lad, that I did. I've struck it rich a couple of times in my life, and I'm not exactly a pauper. Well, Mr. White, he wouldn't sell the Clara M. So what did old Teak Barnaby do? He signed aboard her as first mate. Aye, and signed on the crew along with him, paying him out of his own pocket. Now, what would be old Teak Barnaby's reason for doing such a thing, eh? I have a vague idea. Well, let me make it clear to you. I knew that map was aboard this here ship. I didn't know where, but I knew it was on board. That's why I wanted to buy the old tub. Not because I'm in love with the lines or the fit of a rigging. You follow me? Perfectly. Now you want the map. Right, matey. And I aim to get it no matter what. So you'd best hand it over quiet-like. 
Aren't you taking a lot for granted, Barnaby? You hardly think I'm going to hand this map over to you just for the asking. I ain't exactly asking. I'm telling you. With this? He's got a knife. Right, lad. All Teak Barnaby's got a knife. Remember how I showed you a trick with this self-same knife? Yes, I remember. Good. Now, this is how it goes, Mr. Kent. The crow is in my pay. Anything happens to you and the lad here can always be explained away. Now, I'm going to ask you once more to hand over that map. Your answer has got to be yes or no. If you say yes, well, it'll go easy with you. If you say no, it'll go hard. Mr. Kent. And I ain't going to do no talking about it. Now then, I want that map. Is the answer yes or is the answer no? That's right, Mr. Kent. Think it over. Because old Teak Barnaby ain't fooling. Well, what is it? Yes or no? Don't give it to him, Mr. Kent. He's a thief and a coward. He wouldn't dare use that knife. Oh, wouldn't I? We'll see. This knife, Kent, is pressed against your stomach. Whether you live or not depends on your answer. Oh, what's the matter? Lost your tongue? All right, then, you're asking for it. Yes. The answer is yes, Barnaby. Here's the map. You're a smart man, Mr. Kent. Now, come along, both of you. The crow's waiting. Come along, lad. All right, I'm coming. I never thought you were a coward, Mr. Kent. All right, the three of you, get in there. Stand over there, Kent. You too, Jim. Oh, and you're no exception, me blooming little stairway. Get over there. Someday, pal, I'm going to take you apart piece by piece. I'm going to break... Oh! Uh, that'll learn you to speak similar to your elders. Why, you skinny little... Take it easy, Pug. Got us where they want us, thanks to Mr. Kenton. There's nothing we can do about it. No, you're talking sense, lad. Irish, Larry. Aye. Put the manacles and chains on him. There's no need for this, Barnaby. I gave you the map. What more do you want? I want to be sure of having no trouble from you. Oh, I ain't so much worried about you, Kent, as these two lads here who might find some way of starting trouble. So it's into iron for the lot of you until I get what I want, and that being a treasure. Hurry, come on, me. Shackle them up. But it'll take months for you to reach that island to get the treasure, Barnaby. I and the three of you are going to spend all the time right down here in a break. There. There they are, Barnaby. Good. All right, Limey and Irish, out you go. And now, gentlemen, I'll be leaving you. With pleasant thoughts of the treasure. The treasure that might have been yours. <laughs> well, this is what they call a pretty kettle of fish, ain't it? Yeah. Mr. Kent, how come you didn't lay into that old walrus? How come you give up the map so easy, huh? I thought it was best not to start any trouble. You mean you were scared? Barnaby was holding that knife against you. You were scared stiff. You really think that, Jimmy? What else could it be? Well, maybe you're right. Maybe I was afraid. Now, listen, you guys. All we ought to do is start figuring some way of getting out of here. Oh, forget it. You'll never get out of these chains. What we need now is Superman. No, Jim. If Barnaby hadn't let that oil lamp burn in, I could change into Superman without any trouble. I'm afraid to take a chance, even with Pug and Jimmy dozing. The sound of one of these chains breaking might wake them up. I wonder if I ought to try it. it wouldn't do any harm, I suppose. If they do wake up, I can tell them I was trying to break the chains. I will try it. Now then, let's see if these manacles that bind Clark Kent would yield to Superman. I'll just expand the muscle of my right arm. Oh, hey, 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 did I hear something? Why, why, no. I heard something that sounded like a chain snapping. Yeah, that's what it sounded like to me. Both of you were dreaming, I guess. You were both dozing off, you know. Yeah, I was kind of dozing, but I wasn't asleep. I tell you, I heard some. Oh, you probably heard nothing more than the sound of my chains as I shifted my position. I was getting sort of cramped and I moved around a bit. Yeah, that might have been it. Ah, why don't you two try to go to sleep again? No, I ain't tired. Me neither. Besides, it's hard trying to do any sleeping with that there lamp shining in my eyes. What did that old wall that Barnaby have to go and leave it burning for? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. Are the lights in that lamp disturbing you too, Mr. Kent? Well, you might put it that way, Jim. Too bad one of us can't reach it and put it out. Decidedly too bad. If that light was out, I could get some shut-eye, maybe. 
When the light was out, I could do a lot of things. Yeah, but the light ain't out. Well, you keep the... quiet about that light. If the light was out, I could sleep better. But the light isn't out, so I can't sleep. Okay, Tom, okay, don't get sore. Oh, forget it. Mr. Kent, hmm? what do you think is happening up on deck? Well, Jim, I guess there's no doubt that Barnaby has set his course for the Indian Ocean. The map on that piece of oiled silk marked the Treasure Island as being just south of Sumatra. Well, when I think I was using that piece of oiled silk to wrap up food I stole so I could keep it fresh, was... boy, didn't you ever look at it? Yeah, I was laying on the floor of that ticket compartment where I was hiding. And I just... Hey, that light. Oh, you and that light. What about it now? It's flickering. The oil lamp is starting to flicker. That means it's going out, don't it? Yes, that means it's going out. The oil is all used up. All right, it's going out. So what? If it goes... See? It's out. Fine. Now, I hope that's the end of that. Hey, ain't that swell? It's pitch black in here. The light ain't shining in my eyes no more. I can get some shut eye now. You're gonna get as sick of the darkness as you did of that light. Oh, now I'm starting to talk about it. Now to make use of the darkness. Did you say something, Mr. Kent? Yes, uh, I said I, I thought there was someone in here with us. Someone in this dungeon with us? Well, there wasn't anyone in here when the light went out. But there is someone here now, Jim. That Superman. Don't be silly, Jim. Who is it? Who's in here? Jim's right. Superman. I've come to help you, all of you. Superman? Is that the guy that... No time for talk, Pug. You can talk later. Now listen to me. This is what I want to do. You two boys are going to stay down here for a while. Yes, sir. Oh, wait a minute. What about me, Superman? You, Mr. Kent, are going to come with me. I may need you. Now, here, let me get you out of those irons. What? Listen to that guy bust those chains. Hey, uh, uh, Mr. Bust out. No, not now. I must work fast. If you're all set, Mr. Kent, come along with me. Yes, I, I'm all set. Well, if you never believed in Superman before, Mr. Kent, you better start believing in him now. All right, you boys. You'll stay here till I accomplish what I've come for. I'll return or send someone to release you. All right, Kent. Let's go. That door is locked, mister, and it's a heavy door made of oak. Hey, do you think One you're going to... One stroke with my fist against the lock. <laughs> hey, Jim, you hear that? He's done it. And now, Mr. Kent... After you. You see, Pug, I told you it was Superman. I told you he was... <laughs> it worked. My trick of talking to myself in two voices worked perfectly. Oh, thank heaven I was able to assume my guise of Superman without revealing my identity to the boys. And now, now to settle matters with Keith Barnaby. And I believe I know where I'll find him. 50%, he says. 50%. Hey, you're caught. Stow that gab, I say, Limey. You want to talk, Barnaby, you are. Yeah. We're going to have our say, and you know no one else will stop us, so help me. Yeah. You've always been a troublemaker aboard this ship, Limey. A troublemaker? Me? I leave it to the lads. Lads, I asked you, did I start this squabble? No. Was it me what started this argument about how the treasure would be split? Oh, yeah. No, Barnaby, it was you what started it. When you got us to sign on this here blooming ship, you told us that when the treasure was found, we'd all share and share alike. Now you try to tell us you never said no such thing. Hey. Eh? And I did not. No, you did not. Before you signed on, I told you plain. 50% for me, I said, and 50% to be shared among the rest of you. You said no such thing. We will not argue about what I said or didn't say. I'm telling you now. It's 50% for me and 50% to be shared among the rest of you. And that's the way it'll be, whether you like it or not. And what if I don't like it? Strut me. It's Superman. Superman. Evening, gentlemen. Fighting about the disposal of the treasure even before you've got it? A double take me! An excellent suggestion, Barnaby. Doubtless the devil would know what to do with you, but I'm afraid old Nick will have to wait, at least until the authorities in Metropolis get done with you. Oh, you look here to me. You may look plenty good in that blue suit and red cape of yarn, but I've dealt with your kind of awe. If you and think I... that knife will do you any good... Keep your distance. I can hit a matchbox at 20 paces with this knife. Take another step forward... All right. You are for it. He's brought it. Look out. Look, the knife in his chest and bounced off. He ain't hurt, he ain't. Jump him, you men. Jump him. Let him have it. Well, what are you standing there for? Jump him, I say. You jump him first, Captain. We'll jump him second. Yeah, right. Your crew have dealt with me before, Mr. Barnaby. I'm afraid they're not anxious to deal with me again. Now then, gentlemen, this is how things will be done from now on. Captain Barnaby here will be placed in irons at once. Boy, Quiet. No. My good friend Clark Kent will be master of this ship until she reaches Metropolis. You there, Scotty. Aye, aye, sir. You'll be first mate. You're about the only one I can trust. You can put your faith in me, sir. Good. Your first job will be to take Barnaby below and put him in irons. After that, you're to release the two boys, Jimmy and Pug. 
Then turn the ship around and head back for Metropolis. Right, sir. Mr. Kent will be here to give any orders that may be Captain necessary. Bobby here? I've got to see him. What do you want? Why, I, I... Heaven, help me. What's going on here? Never mind that. You're the radio operator, aren't you? What's the matter? Uh, a call of distress, sir. The tanker made of the mist. Bound for Cardiff. She rammed another vessel in the fog. What? They're both sinking about 20 miles southeast of here. Both ships going down fast, sir. Scotty, you'll change your course and head for those sinking ships. Aye, aye, sir. All right. On deck, you man. I'm following them. Well, I guess I'd better get up on deck, too. Hmm. Fog is just as bad as it was. Clara I am, it's too slow to reach those sinking ships in time. I'll have to go to the raid myself. Nothing to worry about here, not with Barnaby safe in irons. This is a job that will require the strength of Superman. So up, up, and away! Me in irons, would they? Manacle my hands and legs, eh? Well, I'll show them. My chance will come, and then maybe they'll realize they can do this to old Teak Barnaby. Why, by the seven seas of. Huh? What's that? Who's there? Who is it? Quiet, Barnaby, quiet. Oh, it's you, Lamy. What do you want? What have you come here for, to Gloat over me? Now, you wrong me, Mr. Barnaby. Boy has nothing but respect and admiration for the locks of you, sir. You know I wouldn't do nothing like gloating over you, sir. What have you come here for, then? Well, to have a little talk with you, as you might say. I thought maybe if I was to help you, help sir... Me? Help me escape, you mean? Oh, I... I thought if I was to do that, you might, uh... Well, you might be willing to split that there treasure 50-50. You catch my meaning, don't you? You don't lose nothing, and, and I don't lose nothing. Suppose I agree. What have you got up your sleeve, Limey? I've got a belt all ready to be lowered away. I've stowed food and water aboard her, enough for five days. Now, here's me plan. I'll set you free. Together we opens the sea cocks with this here tug. She sick fast. We get the way in the open boat, taking the treasure map with us, eh? We'll have to get the map first. Kent's got it. Uh, we'll get it. Then we'll row to the main. With the map in our hands, we'll take the ship for Sumatra. And after that, there's a hundred ways of getting to that there treasure island. Well, Captain, what do you say, eh? Well, I say, nice work, Limey. You're a man after my own heart. And I see that you don't lose nothing by it. <laughs> oh, don't you bother. I'll see to that. Huh? Oh. Aye. <laughs> all right, all right. Come on, hop to it. Get these irons off me. And hurry. All right, right, but there's no hurry. hurry. Let's take our time, I says, and do a thorough job. Aye. Now, here's me plan. I'll set you free. Together we opens the seacocks of this here tub, scuttles her so she sinks fast, and then we gets away in an open boat, taking the treasure map with us, see? We'll have to get the map first. Kent's got it. We'll get it. Then we'll row to the mainland. With the map in our hands, we'll take ship for Sumatra, and after that, there's a hundred ways of getting to that there treasure island, eh? Uh, it's a good plan. All right, come on. Hop to it. Get these irons off me. In a hurry. No, there ain't no hurry. Let's take our time, our seas, and do a thorough job, eh? Yeah, now. Yeah. I got a better way of sinking the ship. Huh? If we open the seacocks, it'll be discovered before the Clara M has time to sink. Yeah. Uh, what's your plan? Yeah. There's a couple of cases of dynamite aboard. Dynamite? Hey. I had it brought on board before we left Metropolis. Dynamite? Take it. I'd need it if we had to do any blasting to get the treasure. Huh? Well, it'll come in handy for another reason now. We'll use it to sink the Clara M. Oh, I think I'll see what you're up to. And a good idea, says I. We'll lay a time fuse to the dynamite, say. Get away on the open boat, and then, after we're gone, the old tub will blow up. <laughs> you're quick to get on. <laughs> get out. Shake a leg with these all irons. Right, all right. There. They're off. <sighs> that feels good. All right. Let's get started. You see, you've got a boat all provisioned. Aye, aye. And the first thing we've got to do is to get our hands on that treasure map. Oh, and now are we going to do that, eh? Well, if I'm not mistaken, that map must be in Clark Kent's cabin. Eh? That Superman fellow took the map away from us. But he said Clark Kent would be master of this here vessel since he got back to Metropolis. The way I figure it, Superman must have given Kent that map. Well, then, come on. Let's get to Kent's cabin and see if we can find it. Ah, 
find the map yet, Barnaby? No. Keep looking. It must be somewhere in this cabin. What if we strike a light? Don't be a fool. We are lucky enough to get into Kent's cabin without him being here. All right. Strike a light and somebody's bound to see it. Uh, wait a minute. Half of them now. Huh? Blow men fold, that's what we are. What do you mean? Well, that map wouldn't be here. If Superman made Clark Kent master of this here vessel, that map is probably laying safe on San Juan this here minute in that little safe in the captain's cabin. A little safe? Why? Why didn't I think of that? Hey, Limey, you must be right. Of course, come on. We're going to the captain's cabin. Quiet, Barnaby, quiet. That wooden leg of yours makes too much noise. Well, I can't help it. <laughs> What's that? What's up? Look there. Scotty and the two lads, Jimmy and Pug is on the bridge. There ain't no one in the captain's cabin. That's funny. Eh? Where's Kent? He's supposed to be master of the ship. Yeah, we won't worry about Kent. Come on. Let's get into that cabin and investigate that safe. Hey, right with you. Quiet in the name of heaven, they'll hear us. Some oil on these door hinges wouldn't hurt. All right, here we are. Hey, and there's the safe. It's lucky I know the combination. I haven't been captain myself for a few days. Up to it, then, and get that safe open. Oh, that does it, my friend. I'm still in charge here, remember that? I've given the orders as to be given. Well, I'm sorry, sir. Really, are you? Aye, aye, aye. Now, let's see. Four left. Two, fourteen. Three right. Two eighty-two. Hurry, hurry. Two left. Two twenty-four. Back. There. She should open. And she does. Now, let's see now. The safety. This neither. And this. Walton, where's Limey? We're right. Here it is, right enough. A piece of old silk, eh? Hey, the treasure map. Get off, just give it to me. Never your mind. I'll take care of it. Oh. Very well. And now that we've got it. Only one thing remains to be done. All right, I'll get below and set a fuse for that dynamite. Aye. Okay. And don't let's waste any time about it. Come on. Having found the map which will lead them to the treasure, Teak, Barnaby, and Limey go below decks to set a time fuse which will blow up the Clara M. Meanwhile, miles away, speeding through the thick fog, Superman rushes to the aid of the sinking tankers. Listen. Faster. Faster. Even now I may be too late. The radio operator said the two ships were sinking fast. I'd rather it hadn't been necessary for me to leave the Clara M. But with Teak Barnaby in chains, there shouldn't be any trouble. Jimmy and Pug planning it are perfectly safe, I'm sure. There's no need to worry. This job shouldn't take too long, and then I'll return to the Clara M. as quickly as I can. I wonder what Editor White will say about that treasure map when we get back to Metropolis. It may be... Wait. There below. The sinking ships. Down. Down. Those ships are going down fast. And they can't launch their boats. But many of those men will lose their lives if I don't save them. This is a job for Superman. Now! Now! And so Superman reaches the scene of the wreck and goes to the aid of the stricken ships. Meanwhile... I must tell both of you lads I don't know what's happened to your friend, Clark Kent. Hmm. You'd be knowing more about that than I would. But, Scotty, the last time we saw him, he was with Superman. Yeah. Superman came into that dungeon below deck, broke Mr. Kent's chains, and took him away. Yeah. Well, your Mr. Kent wasn't with Superman when that there fancy dress fellow took over the Clara M. Yeah, Superman told you Kent was going to be captain, ain't that right? Yeah, and so he will be, lad, when he turns up. In the meantime, following Superman's orders, I'm taking charge of the Clara M. Say, we're steering our course for two tankers that collided 20 miles from here? Yeah, that we are. I'm thinking rapid they are from what the wireless messages tell us. Yeah, I doubt we'll arrive in time to save them. Let's hope there's a faster vessel than ours standing nearby to see them. I sure hope so. Ah, there, lads, it's best not to upset yourself about it. There's a way of the sea. There's many a ship's gone down, and many a sailor man gone down with it. And every sailor man in time learns to take such things philosophically. You live and you die by the sea, and you... (laughs) Here, I'm talking too much, I can see that. Let's turn our thoughts to something pleasant, like uh, that there treasure map, eh? Hey, that's something, ain't it? When I thought away in this tub, I never thought I'd get mixed up with a buried treasure. And maybe you won't. Scotty here says Superman gave orders to turn back to Metropolis. Yeah. Me, I'd give my right arm to be sailing off of the Indian Ocean, any place but Metropolis. I sure hate to be going back to that bird. Say, why did you stow away, Pug? And 
Why are you afraid to go back to Metropolis? Carl, if you had my old man, you, you wouldn't would... talk about your father that way. Uh, he ain't never been no father to me. Why not die when I was... Listen, Scotty, if you know... Hey, hey Scotty, listen. Here, you. It's Mr. McTavish. From All on. right, Mr. McTavish, then. Listen, something funny's happened. Mm-hmm. I just found one of the lifeboats is missing. What's that? Another lifeboat's missing. Uh, yeah, more than that. The missing boat made me suspicious, and I had a look at the next boat. Hey, well, well what about it? Somebody stove a hole in it with an axe. Hey, huh? what are you talking about? I'm telling you straight. Every lifeboat's got a hole stove in her. Every single one of them. Hey, Tesh, man, that doesn't make sense. One of the boats missing, and the rest of them with holes stove in them. Barnaby. Hey, what's that, lad? Barnaby. He's escaped. I know it. Barnaby. By heavens, the lad's right. That's the only answer. You there. Aye, sir. Get below to the brig where you can put Barnaby in irons. Aye. Find out if he's still there. Yeah, I can answer that, sir. Hey, what? Who are you? Come up from below. Went down to bring Barnaby some food. Hey, it's there, sir. He's gone. Limey's gone with him. Limey? Yeah, so that's it. Limey helped Barnaby escape. And then they made off in that lifeboat. After breaking holes in the rest of them so we couldn't follow him. But why would Limey help Barnaby escape? The treasure, lad. The treasure. Limey hopes to get part of... Heaven help us. Yeah, what's the matter? The map. They wouldn't make off without first getting the treasure map. Come on, boys. We've got to get to the captain's cabin right away. Well, here's the cabin, but... Look, the safe. It's been broken into. Uh, mm-hmm. The map's gone. Well, I guess there's no doubt of it now. Barnaby's escaped and taken the treasure map with him. Gosh, if only Superman was here. Or even Mr. Kent. They'd know what to do. Yeah, I wish they were here, too. Because I don't mind telling you I'm all at sea. If I only... Great day. What was that? Explosion. Below decks. What's happening? What goes on here? Barnaby's work, I'll be bound. Now I see it if you don't. Now I understand why those lifeboats were stove in. If those explosions are what I think they are, we'll be sinking any minute. And we can't do a thing to save ourselves. Not one blasted thing. Look out. Flames. Flames shooting up from the hole. Aye, fire. And I was right. Lads were doomed. Doomed. Without life, what, there's not one thing we can do to save ourselves. Now I understand why Barnaby and Limey stove in those life boats. If those explosions are what I think they are, we'll be sinking any minute. And we won't be able to do a thing to save ourselves. Uh, that was a bad one, lads. Rock the whole ship. Look out. Flames. Flames shooting up from the hole. Yes, yeah, she's cut fire. And no small fire it is either. You there. Aye, sir. Get the man working with a fire extinguisher. Fire extinguishers. They'll do no good to the likes of that fire, sir. Yeah, be that as it may, you'll do as you've told. Up to it now. I... How come those explosions anyways? You carrying a dynamite in this tub? We were carrying it all right, though I never knew it till this minute. Not any man aboard for that matter. What's going to happen, Scotty? I heard once that the most dreaded thing on shipboard is a fire. Is that so? No, 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 lad. You're not to go worrying yourself about something you can do nothing about. Don't worry. Huh. Look at those flames shooting up from the hole. They're getting worse, pal, and I ain't kidding. Uh... If the lifeboats can't be used, what are we going to do when this tub starts sinking? Figure that one out for us, will you? Mr. McTavish. Mr. McTavish. Hey, what is it? That fire's all out of control. Uh, not only that, but them explosions have blown a hole in us below the water line. Big enough to stick your head through. Hey, yeah, all right. Keep up to the fire with the extinguisher. Oh, Hold it and check as long as you can. Uh, come on, lads. Where to? I'm going to the radio room, and I'm not leaving either of you. I'm going We can take care of ourselves. You'll come with me, or I'll know the reason why. Now, get along there. Good night. Look at those flames. How long do you think the boat can last, Scotty? Yeah, we'll last until we sink. And if you think that's a silly answer, you can give me a better one. Here now. Tell this companion away. Hey, the radio room's right along here, ain't it? Yeah, here it is, right in here. Oh. Ah, not waiting for orders, eh, mister? No, sir. I knew where we finished the minute I heard those, those explosions. I'm sending a call of distress. Oh, yeah, good, good. Gosh, I, I wonder where Mr. Kent is. I don't know what happened to him after he went off with Superman. Do you think he's on board? Well, I don't see how he can be on board, lad. He'd have shown up before this. Golly. Well, well, have you had any response, mister? Mm, no, sir, none as yet. Hey, we will keep trying, keep trying. Aye, sir, you can count on me to keep trying till we go down. No, no, I'll have none of that. You'll get a chance to save your skin. Tell me how, with the lifeboats all stove in. If I could get my hands on Barnaby and Lyon... You keep your hands on that radio key. Come on now, lad. Where are you gallivanting to now? Up on deck to see how things are going. Come on. Bridging the broad Atlantic, searching desperately for some hope of rescue, the wireless sends its call of distress. Meanwhile, miles away, Superman, having completed his mission of mercy, speeds toward the Clara M through the dawn. Well, I'm glad that job is done. By using the anchor cables of those tankers, I managed to haul both of them to the mainland. <laughs> The captains and the crew will never know what happened. 
and never find out what pulled them through the water with the speed of a powerboat. Well, I'll soon be back at the Clara M. Wait a minute. What's that on the horizon? Smoke. Must be a steamer of some kind. Probably passing very close to the Clara M. Well, the minute I get on board, I'll have to reappear as Clark Kent. Which reminds me, I'd better start thinking up a pretty good explanation right now. Well, I can say... Hello. What's that bobbing on the water off to my right? Looks like a small boat. Honey, I'd better investigate that. There it is below me. Yes, it's a boat, all right. And there are two men in it. Something wrong with them, too, sprawled out like that. They must need help. Down! Down! What? Limey. And Barnaby. What in the world? Oh, Barnaby's finished. Bullet hole through the chest. And Limey. What did I Still a little life left in him. Not much, I'm afraid. Uh, knife wounds. Must have had a fight, these Pulled two. a knife on me. Pulled a knife, he did. What's that? Pulled a knife on me. We fought. Fought hard. I got him finally. I never expected I'd have a gun to swine. Tried to get all the swag for himself, eh? I showed him. I showed him. By me. Oh, he's finished, too. Took his last breath. I think I begin to see. Limey must have freed Barnaby, and together they made off in this boat. Then they had a fight over the map. The map. That must be here, too. Let's see. Yeah, here it is, all right. Well, I'll just take that along with me. Now then, what to do about these two? Well, I suppose there's only one thing to be done. And the quicker I get it over with, the better. Hey, lad, I, I know that. If only we knew where Mr. Kent is. From the time he walked out on deck with Superman. Hey, listen, Scotty. What you bring us up here on a bridge for? Oh, uh, I thought it would be the best place, huh? Best place for what? What are you talking about? Lads, I... I've got something to say. There'll be no chance now that we can be saved. Hey, hey, what do you no, mean? No, no, let me finish, lad. The hole blown in our side and the Clara M's burning fast. She's lifting bad already. And in another five or ten minutes, it'll all be over. Gosh. The crew will realize that in a minute, and then, well, there'll be some of them take it hysterical-like, and some of them take it calm. But take it, they must. Now, which is it going to be, lads? How will you take it? Why, calm, I guess. Yeah, sure. Me? Me, I'm tough. Good lad. That's why I brought you both up here on the bridge. Somehow, going down, it'll be easier up here. Excuse me, sir. It's the radio man. Hey, what is it? I've had a reply to our message of distress, sir. The United States destroyer, sir, 80 miles away. 80 miles? Uh, All I could get was heading toward you at 20 knots. Will you please? And then our batteries went dead, sir. Hey, well, it doesn't matter. It couldn't possibly reach us in time. Wait, we're sinking fast. And still no sign of Mr. Kent. Look. A lot of the men are jumping into the water. The rest of them just standing there on deck, waiting. Scotty. Easy, lad. No, easy. We'll all be over in a few minutes. Just, just look off there toward the horizon. Make believe through the dawn you can see that destroyer steaming for us. Yeah, if it only was. Boy, if we could just see that destroyer coming for us. Listen, what was that? Scotty, the car am lurched forward, and I could feel it give way under my feet. It's the end, sir. She's getting ready to go under. Aye, we'll. Let's all get ready to go under with her. Bravely, lads, bravely. We'll go down like sailormen, lads. Hmm? <laughs> Spread your legs and stand square up on the deck. Aye, sir. Aye, aye. Hands up, lads. Eyes straight ahead. Chins up. Eyes straight ahead. Her bows are underwater, sir. Aye. She'll dive bow first. Any minute now. Any minute. Of... Wait. Look there. What is it? Scotty. Jim, look. What a chance. It is, Pug. It is. It's Superman. And he's heading straight for the bridge. Here he comes. <laughs> Superman. Jimmy. Well, you people are in a bad way here. The car I am is getting ready to go under sub. Oh, I see. Here, both you boys, throw your arms around my neck and hold on tightly. You men, I'll take one of you under each arm. But, Superman, what about Mr. Kent? We don't even know where he is. Oh, he's all right, Jimmy. I've taken care of him. Oh, thank goodness. 
What about the crew? They're all in the water. I'll have to help them as best I can. Quick now, hang on. The ship's going under. She's going under now. Hold on. Up, up, and away. What do you know? We're flying. This guy's like an airplane. Oh, I've done this before. Gosh, those poor guys down there in the water. I can't save them all. I can't risk your lives trying to save them. Then drop us. Hold on to the lads and drop me in the radio, man. Wait, look. Isn't that... Why, sure, it's a plane. Sure, it must be from that destroyer I contacted. That's what it is, all right. Hey, look. Smoke on the horizon. That must be your destroyer. Yes. Look, the plane's going to land. She'll pick up the survivors. Most of them can hang on to the pontoons until the destroyer gets here. Well, looks as if I'm not needed here any longer. Hey, you're not going to drop us, are you? Oh, don't you worry about that. I'm flying with you all to that destroyer. And I'll come back here and help in the rescue. Hold tight. Here we go. And so, this time, with the help of the United States Navy... Superman saves the lives of his friends and brings another adventure to a happy conclusion. But what of the treasure map? Will it lead our friends into new and more exciting adventures? Be sure to hear the next thrilling episode of our story with Superman. And remember, tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman! Up in the sky, look! It's a plane! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a class.